Welcome to it. Good morning, my sister. Morning, sister. Um, G. My name is Graham Richards. Welcome to it. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Um, hump day, so it's freewheeling down to the weekend from yes. here. Um, it's going to be an inspired show today. Absolutely mm. incredible show. We have dancers on the show to get us into the mood yeah. for the rest of the it's weekend, getting straight into the weekend. There's so much going on. I'm excited. Ah, it's pumping this morning. You know it's a Wednesday, so uh, culinary hotline. Big! Zing, zing, zing! You'll get the message. It's going to be an awesome show. Why? Because you guys have sent through a ton of amazing comments, questions, your own recipes. We'll delve through as many of those as possible. But keep them coming on our Espresso Morning Show Facebook page. I'll go through some of the key recipes and those key words that you can send in if you want to bake along with us this morning. But our amazing team is here to support you. So if you've got any culinary conundrums that you can't quite wrap your head around, give them to us. Let us take that load and we'll get through as many of them as possible. Also going to be traveling to the Western Mediterranean Ooh. with Imagine Cruising. Um, we're going to be living vicariously through those, through those lucky enough to be able to enjoy the trip of a lifetime. So it's going to be a lot of fun this morning. Absolutely, man. I'm so rude. I didn't even introduce myself. Gamalam Gugutla Adams. And I'm going to go and go and I'm Sandra Expresso right here on SABC3. Listen, man, it's time for us to check on the rest of the team, right? Looking so good. Good morning, <laughs> Jamie. Good morning, you beautiful people. Happy hump day for myself, Jamie Lee Domberg, reporting live for duty. As you can see, we are in the beauty room, which means I'm about to give you some style tips this morning. Now, the main purpose, of course, for eyelashes is to protect the eyes from dust, but we often regard them as an emphasis of beauty. We all do wish, girls, I know you feel me with this one, but we all wish for thick, lengthy, and defined eyelashes. But with W Beauty, you don't have to wish any longer. I'm about to be the plug for you guys. Now, with a new and improved mascara, they've made it possible for absolutely every woman to have the perfect lashes. Now, I'm joined this morning by Expresso makeup artist, Bernice, who's going to tell us how, a bit more about this wonder product. Good morning, Bernice. Hello, how are you? I'm very good on yourself. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Um, so today we've got three mascaras from Woolies. So mm -hmm. we have a waterproof one. Yeah. Um, we've got a length and define one, and then we also have an extra volume one. Um, like, obviously the main focus of a mascara is just to enhance your lashes but each does a little bit different so the waterproof obviously it prevents smudging um, and also um, when you are prone to have like more um, sensitive eyes and your um, eyes are very like teary I think maybe up for um, a waterproof mascara or if you've got a special day like a wedding or something always go for waterproof um, so it just, to try yeah. <laughs> just so it does and um, smudge throughout the day because sometimes you do forget you've got um, eye makeup on you do rub, rub and there's yeah. a whole situation <laughs> um, and then the extra volume it actually just enhances the color it's like really intense okay. and it's also um, nice and uh, um, uh, <sighs> It doesn't clump or anything. Okay, and then, extra drama yes, it the really eye. does um, add to your lashes. And then the length and define, it really does lengthen and define your lashes. And the waterproof mascara also doesn't clump. So it's really nice. I love that. But now people's obviously wondering, Jamie, you got lashes on, like your girls have lashes on. Why is it so important to have a mascara on before you actually apply the lashes? I think the thing is people forget sometimes when you put a, a false lash on and you have your own lashes, like sometimes when you do put foundation, even just foundation and a lash, you can tell the difference between your two lashes because it does tend to be more um, like not as intense and mm -hmm. defined as a, a, a false lash would look. So just to add a, a coat of mascara before you put your lashes on would be great because otherwise you would tell, um, uh, see the difference between the two. Um, and try not to put the mascara on when you have your false lash on because otherwise you don't want to damage your lashes, mm. the, the false lashes. So rather do it before, uh, once the coat's dry, then you can put the false lashes on. Girl, you are the plug. Thank you so much for joining us for this glam session this morning but of course all these mascaras are 100% vegan and endorsed by beauty without cruelty which is amazing now if you are looking for mascara that will take your lashes to the next level shop all these at who it's in store online or on the who it's app 
What's cooking? Good looking. We're back in the kitchen. Nicole is working hard. You've already done most of the work for us this morning. Well done. <laughs> uh, obviously, the, the kitchen fairies have been buzzing this morning because we have got, obviously, the culinary hotline um, on the way this morning, which means we are taking your culinary conundrums and hopefully coming up with some brilliant answers to that and some amazing, delicious desserts, cakes. Um, you've even got some milk course in the mix. What are we making yeah. today? Yeah, so we, we're starting off the show today with the upside down pineapple cake, which is exactly Beautiful. what I'm busy doing now, yes, grilling the pineapple for Caramelizing those puppies, nice. Yeah, just to speed up things. And then we have, uh, we're gonna be showing, if you want to know how to make marshmallow frosting, Yes, so who doesn't? We, I mean, yeah, come on. I okay, mean, beautiful. It's the perfect topping. And then we are also making a pizza, which is what I'm busy over here as well. And um, we're going to be making a dessert pizza with fruit. Ooh, well, I'm going to say it. We are putting banana on a pizza. As <laughs> diverse as that is, I know it's going to draw a line in the sand for many oh. people, but we're doing it. But it is a dessert pizza, so a bit of chocolate banana for me, that's the perfect mix there. And of course, the key word there, if you want to create along with us, is pizza. You, um, or pizza, however you want to say it. You <laughs> Miss the keyword pizza to 33728. Mm -hmm. We'll send you that ingredients list. For the marshmallow frosting, the keyword is sweet if you want to cook along. And then we're also making milk course this morning. Yes, so milk course is super traditional South African and you get different variants, but uh, we had a viewer that wanted to know how to make the lumpy one, so we're going to show them a very, very simple recipe. Beautiful, I'm guessing that's what the cinnamon sugar is for. Our yeah. milk course this morning, the keyword yeah. there is dessert. SMS that to 33728 and you can cook along. Um, but I've got to say a massive thank you. We've been asking all week for you guys to send through your questions, your comments, maybe inspire us with a recipe or two, and you've done that en masse. So thank you so much. We'll delve into as many of those as we can with our amazing kitchen team. So stick around. Jamie, are you a Batman fan or Twilight fan? Uh, Twilight, I watched mm. Every single toilet that really? I was obsessed. Batman, I mean, now that I have little Luca, not I'm probably going to gonna get to that stage. But right now, if I can stay clear from it, eh, it's, it's, like, I don't <laughs> it's not want really it. your thing, right? Not my vibe. But if it is your thing or you just enjoy indulging in movies, well, guess what? The latest person who was announced on the 13th of February to be playing the latest Batman is none other than... Robert Patterson. Patterson. Yes. Amazing. Which is linked now to our Good Morning post on our Facebook page, which says, uh, from Michael Keaton, George Clooney, and Christian Bale to now Robert Patterson, what are your thoughts on the Twilight actor playing the latest Batman? <sighs> hmm, very interesting to see what people are going to say on our social media, especially yeah. morning uh, show, SABC3. What are, what are your thoughts? You know what? I don't know how he's going to fit from being, you know, a vampire and like this kind vampire who falls in love with you know a human to now wearing a cape and being batman can we now um disassociate him from from that cat from okay. that character to I something new a franchise that's been ongoing for years i feel you this is the thing and i think jp will obviously speak about this a little bit mm. later because uh, he is in studio today but here's the thing it, I like seeing actors change it up a bit. Fair enough. But these big roles like Harry Potter, mm. Twilight, Mr. Bean, you do not change <laughs> the, things up. I love how you managed to just slip Mr. Mr. Bean, Bean in that because conversation. Because people, you grew up watching and seeing a certain character That's and true. then now have to see them play different. It's going to be interesting to see though, very like, mm. I'm interested to see it. That's that's all I gotta say. Absolutely. But I don't know for it though. But now we got that good morning post for you, so check it out on our social media. But it's time now for the news headlines with Graham. Thank you so much, ladies. We start with a warning. Viewers should brace themselves for the possibility of further load shedding today. ISCOM said the likeliness of load shedding had increased as they had lost additional generation units due to unplanned breakdowns. Power Utilities said even though there have been some improvements in the generation system, customers are requested to continue reducing demand and to use electricity sparingly. ISCOM said it would communicate regularly today. Now, the city of Cape Town has welcomed the ruling of the Cape Town High Court, allowing the city to enforce force its bylaws outside the Central Methodist Church, where some 600 foreign nationals have been sheltering since October last year and where they sleep, cook and wash on Green Market Square. Acting Cape Town High Court Judge Daniel Torare granted the city an interim order to remove them and ruled that it had seven days to execute this order. On the international front, <clears throat> the wife of Lesotho's Prime Minister, who was charged with murdering her predecessor, will stand trial on March the 17th, the magistrate ruled yesterday. Masai Tabane is accused of ordering the killing 
killing of Prime Minister Thomas Tobane's estranged wife, Lipolelo, who was shot dead in June of 2017 near her home in Masiru. Lipolelo, then 58, and Thomas Tobane, now 80, had been going through an acrimonious divorce when she was killed two days before her husband's inauguration as Prime Minister. Tobane and Messiah Tobane, now 42, married just two months later. Then, one of the world's biggest airlines, Delta, has announced that it is to spend 15 billion rand to be carbon neutral by 2030, a radical shift to make flying less destructive. The airline joins JetBlue Airways in the US, who earlier announced measures to drastically cut its emissions. Aviation emissions account for 2% of the world's total CO2 emissions from fossil fuels. And with concerns for the environment growing, airlines have been among the most criticized for the part they play in global, uh, global climate change. And now, an item on those diligent men and women who put their lives on the line to combat poaching. Sand Park's rangers are at the front line of the ongoing war against poachers. The most rhinos are killed in our or near the Kruger National Park. Their air wing team takes the fight to the sky. With helicopters, the rangers are able to keep stock of the animals in the Kruger, spot all sorts of problems and combat poachers on a much faster time scale. But such operations involve high costs and fuel costs form a third of these expenses. In answer to this, the international oil company Total, which has been involved with Sand Parks for some 61 years, sponsors all of the fuel needs for the air wing. And as Chief Pilot Jakob Moll said, and we quote, the oil company's backing has ensured a huge boost in our efficiency of the operations from the sky. And now an item from the world of entertainment, something we've just touched on. We've just had our first glimpse at British actor Robert Pattinson's iteration of the iconic comic book character Batman. The title of the latest film saga involving the character from the DC Comics, uh, Stable, obviously has been confirmed as the Batman. And the first look sees what the famous bat badge and mask will look like in the film, which is set for release in June of 2021. A little bit more on this in our full entertainment report. Right now, let's delve into yesterday's sporting action. We kick it off with cricket in Australia. Claimed a four-wicket win over the Proteus woman in a T20 Cricket World Cup warm-up match at the Corrin Ralton Oval in Adelaide yesterday. Home side opted to bowl first and watched as South Africa's Danae Fanica kicked 67 runs from just 51 deliveries. Fanica guided the Proteus to 147 for six in their allotted 20 overs. Australia replied with 150 for six with three bowls to spare. The ICC Women's T20 World Cup kicks off on Friday and the Proteus will face England on Sunday. Then and some fantastic news in the world of athletics. Olympic champion Wade Van Nickirk has marked his return from a career-threatening knee injury with a 100-meter race win at an unofficial university meet in Bloemfontein. The 27-year-old injured his knee during a celebrity touch rugby match in Cape Town back in 2017. Van Nickirk has now made a comeback running the 100-meter race in just under 10.2 seconds. Then our Tuesday night football saw Atletico Madrid stun Liverpool 1-0 at the Wanda Metropolitano State and Borussia Dortmund, they beat Paris Saint-Germain 2-1 at Signal Iduna Park in the first leg of the UEFA Champions League round of 16. I'd like to go as Saul Niguez, scoring the winner as early as the fourth minute to stun the defending European champions Liverpool. In the other match, uh, Erling Braut-Halant scored a brace to secure the win for his side. So the return legs will take place on Wednesday, the 11th of March. That's where we leave our sport for now. Let's get into the weather. The time is now 13 minutes past six. It's time for us to have the first look at the weather this morning. But first, we have asked you to send in your sunrise pictures. Nancy Governor sent us this amazing sunrise picture from Umgomaz and KZN, where a strong thunderstorm is expected with cloudy conditions and a few showers in the evening, reaching a maximum of 25 degrees. Thank you so much to you, Nancy, for that amazing sunrise picture. This one comes from Pat, Pat Sankel. She sent us this beautiful sunrise from Durban, where times of sun and clouds are expected with a couple of showers and humid conditions reaching a maximum of 26 degrees. We absolutely love seeing these pictures, so please make sure to keep them going, keep them flowing on our social media platforms using the hashtag Expresso Show. Now to have a look at the temperatures for the rest of the country, Sukala Epolokwane with a low of 17, reaching a high of 28. And high humidity from Bombela with a maximum of 30 degrees and a minimum of 21. Pretoria, it's a partly cloudy day 
today with a low of 19, reaching a high of 28. And thunderstorms are expected for Johannesburg with a low of 17, reaching a maximum of 27 degrees. Now, if you are in Mahikeng, 18 degrees is your lowest temperature today with your maximum 30 degrees. Clear stop, 1928. And heavy rainfall for Kimberley at a low of 20, reaching a high of 28. And Bloemfontein, 1626. And a couple of showers for Richards Bay at a minimum of 22 degrees, reaching a maximum of 27. In Peter Maritzburg, your low is 18, reaching a high of 22. And occasional rain for Durban with temperatures from 24 degrees at the low, reaching a maximum of 26. Now in Tata, your minimum is 17 degrees, reaching a high of 26. A northeasterly wind of 28 kilometers an hour in Mondi with a minimum of 20 degrees, reaching a high of 26. Craig Dock, uh, 1732. An easterly wind of 32 kilometers an hour in Port Elizabeth with a minimum of 19, reaching a maximum of 28. High humidity for George with a maximum of 28 and a minimum uh, temperature of 20 degrees. And the lowest temperature in the country uh, at the start of the morning is in Sutherland with a low of 15, reaching a high of 28. And down to the Mother City, Cape Town, 19 is your low, reaching a high of 28 degrees. And the highest temperature in the country is in Worcester with a maximum of 35 degrees and a low of 18. Springbok, 1534. And Uppington, your peak for today is 33 degrees with a low of 22. Whatever the weather in your part of the country, please make sure to have yourselves a fantastic Wednesday morning. Fantastic Ooh. morning. It's going to be happy hump day, G. Uh, thank you, you too, sister. You look hey, gorgeous this morning. You, thank I'm you. having a bit of fun here. We're kind of debating the whole Batman conundrum because I I'm like that. I'll bond emotionally with a with a <laughs> Batman. So like Christian Bale, I absolutely loved. I love the treatment of those that Batman series. Look at me there. I was Batman. Yay! I am oh, Batman. Oh, that's you. How cool is this? I, I got to do a, a video in the dark with that suit on, sent it to my best mate's little boy Aww. on, on um, Halloween and did the whole... Uh, so how cool is that? That is the that coolest thing ever. You could actually cool and dad. You got just got cool points for, right forever now. Forevermore, um, his kid thinks that Batman is real. But um, Robert Pattinson is taking the, the lead. I, I dig the oh, idea. Yeah, you know? I, no, I, yeah? I quite like the idea because okay. what I'm, I'm most excited about is that this is the, the DC Batman universe that has the current form of the Joker in it. And that's a lot more real and gritty and it's it's not very superhero-y. So I'm really interested to see how this Batman, this iteration of Batman is going to kind of come to life in that. But I dig Robert Pattinson, man. He's, He's cool. a cool guy. There's nothing wrong with him. Again, I just feel like it, sometimes when you, like I see him in Twilight, I know him as yeah. Twilight, it's always difficult to get him out of a different character, but I'm very interested to see how he's going to portray this. Yeah, well, I'm most interested to hear what uh, JP Sebastian has to say mm. about that, but we're going to talk about this at length this morning because it's important stuff. Uh, we love our Batman, we love our DC comics, um, but you can let us know how you feel about it. Who is the best Batman in history, and how do you mm. feel about Robert Pattinson Which being clearly? Batman? With your support, we are now able to donate 20,000 pairs of Smart Step school shoes to children in need. Celebrate goodness when you buy a crush. Dial the number on the pack for a chance to win your share of cash prizes and school fees. Crush, share the goodness.
It's my feel good birthday show. Welcome back. You are live with Expresso on a beautiful Wednesday morning, and we are going to continue to shine a spotlight today on teen suicide prevention. It is, in fact, Teen Suicide Prevention Week. One death is one too many. And for our parenting segment this morning, family therapist and registered social worker and good friend, Kim Abrams, now joins us to give us some advice on what we can do as a parent if our child is depressed. It's a conversation that we need to have Absolutely. and it's something that parents need to wrap our heads around as difficult as it is. Mm. Maybe we all kind of live in denial to some degree yeah. when it concerns ourselves, let alone our children. Yeah. Uh, so Kim, thank you so much for adding your voice to the conversation. And we've got the South African Depression and Anxiety Group's contact details on our social media platforms on screen throughout this segment. Please use that line. They are amazing. There is someone waiting to talk to you if you need to talk. That's the most important thing. So, Kim, maybe a good place to start is to ask how prevalent depression is within children and teens, because children are and yeah. can be affected as well. Yeah, I think we often think as adults that children are immune from feeling kind of what, yeah, what we feel. Thing, yeah. yeah, but actually, it's sadly, it's one of the mental health um, issues that's just on the rise. We don't see any decrease in it. Children are actually coming in younger with signs of depression, and and then obviously with life changing and being so fast paced as it is, parents are often not kind of feeling like they can be up to date with everything that's happening and how to look after their child properly. So it's, it's just one of those things that is unfortunately on the rise. I think we, uh, life is becoming more complex yeah. and I think we often feel as parents, I certainly feel it now, even with a, a three year old, a two and a half year old, that I'm on the wrong side mm. of the digital divide yeah. and I'm kind of losing touch yeah. with reality. What are some of the biggest root causes for depression, especially in younger people? So, just to put like a disclaimer, it does vary from child to child. It's, it's a scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of what. Um what, what we would see is kind of, uh, well, in terms of looking at things that can affect depression, we're looking at peer pressure can be one of the major causes, academic expectations and needing to keep up with the really fast pace and hard kind of curriculum that children are facing. And they parents' have to, expectations absolutely, on top of that. Yeah. And children just feeling... Um, very confused in terms of their identity so we're also seeing um, issues with children being confused about their sexuality and then people not understanding how to help a child manage that and that can often lead to a child developing a mental health issue like spiraling depression. out of control absolutely what are some of the telltale signs? Let's get practical mm. for a moment here. Yeah. From a parent's perspective, what should we be looking out for? So I always advise to look at behavioural changes and emotional changes. Okay. So emotional changes would be, you know, drastic changes in your child's mood. So were they kind of a very sociable person before? Were they hanging out with friends and has that completely changed? Or are they becoming more tearful? Are they becoming more angry? More it's one of Yeah. And then with behavioural, you know, you might see the child becoming more withdrawal, withdrawn. Um, and retreating and not wanting to do things that used to interest them. They might also have changes in their appetite. So eating more or less, sleeping more or less. So it is again a very kind of very broad spectrum group of symptoms we're looking at. But those are kind of the telltale signs. I Often suppose a change is absolutely, enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Telltale you sign. know your child best. So when you see a change, trust your gut on it. Um, Speaking of trusting your gut, a lot of that stems from the relationship that you already share mm. with your child, that parent-child relationship and building a strong foundation so yeah. that you can have that open door policy, so that you can have space mm. um, and maybe a, kind of a general, uh, you know, you're ready to see those kind of changes. How important is that child-parent relationship? It is vital. Because I suppose how I usually explain it is if your child doesn't feel safe enough to talk to you about what they are going through, it's going to be very difficult for them to trust adults to outside of the home. Stranger, yeah. yeah, so the parent-child bond is critical. But that's also not to say that if you have a fantastic bond with your child that they're less kind of um, at risk of developing depression, you know, because there's environmental factors we need to take into account that's beyond a parent's control. But your child, if, the, if a child has a good bond with you and they feel that they can come to you to talk about things, or alternatively, you always keep the communication door open because if you're dealing with a teenager, they're not going to come willingly all the time. You have Especially to, if they are locked in, in what can be a very painful cycle You have to reach out. So it can kind of make it or break it in, in many ways, the, the bond. 
I think a, a good start uh, from a parent's perspective, take your own baggage out of the equation. Mm. It's not your fault. You want to get practical and you want to make sure that they're getting help. Um, and I'm speaking specifically now to young people. If you do feel like you need to talk to someone, maybe you can't talk to your parents, but there are people, neutral people that you can speak to in a very safe place. The depression and anxiety group is there. They are open 24 seven. They are, are there as a resource for you to be able to speak to someone who knows Trust me, they know what you are going through. They've helped people in your situation. As alone as you do feel, there is someone who can help you. So make contact with them or speak to your parents or even speak to a friend, but speak to someone. Mm -hmm. Help is out there. You can, of course, get in touch with the Anxiety and Depression Group on 0800 20 50 26. Someone's out there ready to take your phone call and talk to you if you need to uh, have someone listen to your, 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 your story. I, I'm so glad that we reached a platform where people can now speak openly about it because for a long time people had a fear of speaking about yep. mental illness, mental disease, uh, you know, just like the mental health states. Yeah. And now they can, of course, call this number and speak to someone and it is confidential so you don't have to worry about that. There is help and there's help over here as well because, Princess, you're always ready to help us with a cup of coffee. Yes. Uh, whether it's a cappuccino, we're looking for a cafe latte. Macchiato. Oh, it sounds so sexy to say. Espresso. Espresso. Uh, what are you surprising us with this morning? Okay. <laughs> For Jamie, uh -huh. it's latte, no sugar. Oh, latte. latte, no sugar. Girl, okay, okay. Are you still on that no sugar situation? No sugar, okay. baby. Still no sugar. For you, Nana, cappuccino, one sugar. There we go. Yes. I love it. Okay, well, I suppose uh, I'm going to have a cappuccino, one sugar. That's what I usually have. But of course, next time I might have a chai latte. Chai latte. You know, just switch yeah. it up a little bit. Or Americano. Maybe I'll order one for Kutle. Uh, Kutle. Americano okay. for Kutle. And an and espresso for Graham. An espresso for Graham yeah. to get him going for the morning. Okay. First one. <laughs> Listen, the Feel Good Breakfast Show continues all the way through to 9 o'clock. Of course, thanks so much for choosing to wake up with us uh, on the other side of this break when you get your cup of coffee when we're celebrating your birthday so you don't miss any of it. A taste loved by those who have tried it. McAfee, great coffee, simple. See you after the break. It's my feel-good birthday show. Happy birthday, a very happy birthday to you. Oh, 
yes, welcome back to it. Your feel good breakfast show. It's Express Alive on SABC3. When you hear the tune, you know what time it is. It's time to zone into somebody's birthday. People are celebrating their birthdays every day. We take a moment out to, you know, to wish them well, to read out mm. messages sent by their loved ones. And of course, we've got celebrities and special people mm. as well celebrating their birthdays. VIPs yes. amongst you, our viewers. Yes, one of them is Millie Bobby Brown, the cutest mm. little teenager ever. She's best known for a role in Stranger Things as Eleven. She turns at 16 today, sweet 16. Oh. Of course, she's all there about the glam on her Instagram, as you can see, has a launch of her new products right now. And of course, if you guys don't know this, Stranger Things Season 4 uh, trailer was just released this past weekend. It's coming so, out. Yeah. Wow. I'm, that stranger. Of course. I'm a stranger. Girl, Stranger Things. Stranger, I stranger. Season 1. I've never been into it, uh, but it's... Really? Uh, yeah, it sounds like something to check out. Definitely, but she mm. is, of course, a star. So, happy birthday to you, Millie Bobby Brown. Happy mm. sweet 16. But now, yes. someone else who's celebrating their birthday is British singer and songwriter. I'm going to need you guys to just hum okay. Okay. for me as I right. read this. Okay. It's Seal, everybody. He turns 57 years old today, and over the course of his career, he has sold 20 million albums and won four Grammys. And most recently, he was featured on the American talent show The Masked Singer, where celebrities compete undercover in giant animal suits. Apparently, their identities are kept top, kept top secret to a point where even his children couldn't yeah, recognize their father. Wow. I think that's so funny. Yeah. That is insane. But okay. he has such a distinct voice. I mean, mm. he does. definitely. You, you should be able to tell yeah. if yeah. you know if you if you like know. Him, if you know his it's voice, he's baby. Na, 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 okay, okay. Well, the real VIP celebrating their yes. birthdays. Let's get into it. Our, our viewers, Caitlin, is celebrating a ninth birthday today. It says, Happy ninth birthday to my granddaughter, Caitlin Naidu. Wishing you all the best, my angel. Enjoy your special day. I miss you lots and can't wait to see you. Love from your granny. Yay. Cute, Caitlin. Cutie. And then Ashleen is turning 31 today. Happy 31st birthday to Ashleen. May our almighty God bless you in abundance and uh, have an awesome day much love from your hubby and kids so happy beautiful birthday, another one comes through i wish joyce Mothiba a happy 75th birthday wow that's a big one may you be blessed with many more years to come we absolutely love you joyce and then another one comes through for brayton happy birthday uh to brayton amarson wishing you all the happiness and joy it is his ninth birthday today may god grant you all your heart's desires love from his proud parents grandmas and sisters, Kayla and Brielle. Happy birthday, cutie pie. Hey, and this one goes to Angelica. Happy 15th birthday to our beautiful daughter, Angelica. May God bless you to see many more years. Love from your mom, dad, Shanae, Shane, Krishanda and Skylin. We love you. And the next one goes to Kaylin. Happy birthday to my daughter. Mommy loves you very much. Have a super awesome day, sweetie pie. Lots of love from your mommy, Colleen, Uncle Andre and your Buddha Regan. Happy birthday to you. Oh, so sweet and the love keeps flowing. Here's one for Helene uh, Stober. A very happy 60th birthday today. Guys, it's a big one. Uh, may you be blessed abundantly. Enjoy your special day. Much love from Denise, Rudine, Troy, JP, Bianca, Avery and the rest of the family. They wish you well on your 60th birthday. I love her happy picture. Birthday. She's like, who does? Who birthday is? Oh, oh okay. sip some wine on that <laughs> 60th. Come on. Yeah, come on. Uh, here's Kaylee, also 70, uh, turning 17 today. Kaylee, 17 today. Uh, and it says happy birthday to my daughter Kaylee. Have a wonderful day from Mommy, Ma, Katie, and Skyla. Mm, my DJ Colored Voice, another one. <laughs> I would like to wish my daughter Christina Abdul a happy sixth birthday. May you enjoy your day, baby girl. Come through. Look how cute she looks. And then lastly, we wish our sister a very happy tenth birthday. May you be blessed in abundance, not just today, but every other day. May you grow up to be a pious uh, Muslim girl and pious, sorry, Muslim girl, and remain the coolness of our parents' eyes. We love you, girl. Farana from Naima and Shuaib. So, oh, happy birthday. Beautiful, love, beautiful, love beautiful it. messages. We love the love. Keep those messages um, flowing. If you would love to uh, wish your loved one or a colleague or whoever it may be, make sure to send us those 15-second videos to yeah. 071-640-6551 or simply email us at uh, birthdays at cordova.tv. It's the 19th of Feb. If you are celebrating Celebrating your birthday from us to you. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Okay, sweetie, time to blow out your candles. <gasps> ah! 
don't ruin the moment. Prevent allergies or cold and flu with fast-acting powder nasal spray from the Nexa range. Nexa, brought to you by Pharma Dynamics. It's a happy birthday. If you are celebrating your birthday, why don't you create a cake? Hopefully we're going to turn that frown upside down with a delicious upside down cake. And Teresa is going to show us the way. Today we are making a beautiful pineapple upside down cake. Something I'm really interested to know. At what point do you flip the upside down? How do you create the upside downness in it? And we're going to do it with a touch of clover pride, extra virgin olive oil this morning. And the keyword here is clover. If you want to bake or create along with us this morning, SMS the keyword clover over to 33728 and you can cook along with us. Uh, good morning, Teresa. Hi. Um, something really interesting, something yes. that is, uh, it's quite a, a traditional favorite. I always imagine someone kind of dropped a cake tin and <laughs> this is how it was created yeah, in the first accident. place. Uh, but take us through what we're going to be making okay, today. Okay, so we've got our pineapple here. So we're going to start here. We are, we've grilled the pineapple. Basically starts the caramelization ah, process there. and make sure that you get those beautiful lines on the tin. Because you want, uh, sorry, they probably have stuck to the grill now. Stuck, yeah. Um, you, you want that caramelization kind of to just to, to get the sugars out of the fruit there. That's right, yeah. Okay. So you're gonna pop those it's in the It's important to grill them, do that before you, you can't just put pineapple on the cake. Yeah, yeah. It's just gonna look really, really beautiful. So pop those in, of course, grease and line your tin, very important. Okay. And then we're going to sprinkle some brown sugar All over right. the pineapple, which is also going to create that beautiful caramel sauce that you see on top of the oh, cake. Oh, lovely, that's gonna kind of drip through and over. be absorbed yeah. into the, see the, the lines sponge. There. Love it. Right, we're going to make our batter now. Okay. So we've got batter and sugar in the bowl. Okay. And just cream that for a good few minutes. You want it to be pale and fluffy. Okay. And that's a term we hear used a lot, pale and fluffy. Yes. <laughs> You'll see the colour will lighten. And it'll... more blonde. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And then we're going to add our egg yolks. Okay. So we're using three eggs that we've separated. Okay. So we're going to pop those in. Just add them one at a time. Oops. You can. Two at a time. <laughs> <laughs> not going to ruin the cake, OK? It's not going to ruin the cake. And then we're going to add our clover olive pride. Okay. And there's sort of this conception that you can't use olive oil in baking because it might affect the flavour. Change the flavour, yeah. But if you use an extra virgin, virgin olive oil, like the olive pride, it's actually perfect. Um, any recipe that calls for olive oil or for any sort of vegetable kind of oil, vegetable oil. You okay. can use your extra virgin olive I'll oil. Just go that, go that route. Yeah. What does the oil do to the eventual outcome? Why are you using the oil in there? The, well, the oil will give you a very moist cake and a, a nice flavour. So it's always good to use that. So mix that in. And then we're going to add the dry ingredients. I wonder, do you want to add them for me? Okay, so we've got some flour. Okay. And then we've also got some baking powder and bicarb. Okay. And a bit of salt as well. A little pinch of salt. There we go. And then we're also going to add some amasi. Okay. And some coconut as well. Yes. Oh, lovely. There we go. And of course, coconut and pineapple go so beautifully together. Oh, I'm just imagining great, what, uh, what this is going to come out like once you've got those beautiful syrups coming, uh, kind of okay. seeping through that sponge. Oh, so made with a blend <laughs> of um, four different kinds of olives for a unique flavour and aroma as well. Low in saturated fats, which is vitally important, cholesterol free, and a rich supply of antioxidants, also high in vitamin E, A, D, and K, helps in the fight against heart disease and strokes. Um, just all added benefits for using an extra virgin olive oil like Olive Pride. Um, the flavour component. It. That's looking amazing. So you've, what are you adding now? The, were these Those the, the whites, egg whites from the, the egg yolks? Yes. Okay. So beat them up with a little bit of cream of tartar, which of course stabilizes the egg whites. Okay. And then you're going to fold that into your batter. So it gives you a lovely, light, airy batter. Okay, and I see you're not being too aggressive with that, but just folding it in, not over mixing it so yeah. you can keep that aeration. And if you've got a okay. couple of little lumps, it's absolutely fine. But you just want to incorporate that. You can wow. see that's looking fluffy and delicious. 
Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so and then just quickly the wrapping up, that goes into the tin over, yep. um, over your our pineapples. grilled pineapples and sugar. Yep, and you bake that at 180 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. And then the trick is you want to let it cool for a couple of minutes before you flip it over. You do the upside downing. It's going to break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, in the oven, 180 degrees, but let's take you through the full process of how we create this amazing, delicious looking upside down pineapple cake. Olive Pride brings a touch of pride and the natural beauty of olive oil to your table. Made with love by Clover. Turn that frown upside down with this delicious and sweet pineapple cake from Clover and Olive Pride. Add one cup of sugar to a quarter cup of Clover butter and whisk until pale and fluffy. Next, whisk in three egg yolks and a touch of pride, then whisk to combine again. Add a cup of flour, a cup of desiccated coconut, half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of bicarb of soda, half a teaspoon of salt, half a cup of clover amasi, and whisk to combine. In a separate bowl, add a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar to three egg whites, and whip until soft peaks form. Add the whipped egg to the flour mixture and fold together. Arrange pineapple rings into a baking tin, then sprinkle over half a cup of brown sugar. Spoon the cake batter all over the top and bake at 180 degrees Celsius for 30 to 40 minutes. Add spoonfuls of whipped clover fresh cream to the bottom half of the cake. Spread it out and sprinkle over toasted coconut and close it up with the top half, pineapple side up. This classic recipe for a pineapple upside down cake is the perfect tea time treat and will be so popular you'll find yourself making this again and again and again. Made with love by Clover. And then we quickly pop this baby into the oven, 180 degrees Celsius, 15 to 20 minutes, but you can test it and then just let it cool before you do the flipping, I understand, yeah. <laughs> uh, because you don't want your beautiful creation to break. And then maybe some lashings of uh, fresh, um, you know, whipped full cream. Cream, yogurt as Oof, well, toasted man. Yeah, I think something to cut through the sweetness because there's going to be a lot of sweetness. Absolutely. The keyword again is clover to double three seven two eight. Teresa, you are a magician. Thank you so much. <laughs> that looks amazing. We'll spread the love with our crew. We'll We'll see you on the other side of a very quick break. Don't stray too far. We're going to continue a vitally important discussion this morning, focusing on our parents and what you can do if your child is depressed. Stay tuned. Olive Pride brings a touch of pride and the natural beauty of olive oil to your table. Made with love by Clover. My name is Sia Sang Ampeñana and I'm 27 years of age. I step into other people's shoes for a living, in other words, I'm an actress. I'm excited to be on Tropical Island of Treasure Season 9 because I'm going to win that million. Simple. I'm preparing for the island by doing what Beyonce does. I am working out twice a day. The most important people in my life are undoubtedly my family. I'm nothing without those people. My friends are 110% behind me for the TIOT9 competition. They think I'm going to bring it home, and I think I will too. She is the Kate Moss to my Naomi, but the girl can sprint. It's actually scary. She's competitive, and she is always ready to win. She's always ready for a challenge. So she's going to win that thing. The other contestants better watch out. Catch me on Tropical Island of Treasure Curacao, only on SAVC3.
Welcome back. You're live with Expresso. Thank you so much for tuning in. Earlier in the show, family therapist and registered social worker Kim Abrams joined us to give us some tips on how parents can help their child overcome depression or at least ensure that the home is a supportive environment, an open environment for your children to be able to speak. And we're going to con continue that chat um, right now. And again, we're going to reiterate that we've got the contact details for the Depression and Anxiety Group, an amazing resource ready to help you right now on our screen. So please use them if you feel you have to. If a parent thinks their child is suffering from depression, what do we do? Once we've gotten yeah. over our own initial anxiety yeah. and we've got our own baggage in check, what do we do for our child? So I suppose first step would be actually to raise it with your child, you know, and you can do it in a really gentle way by just saying to your child, you're noticing that they're acting a bit differently um, and, you're, and you're worried about them. So can they maybe Show explain... Yeah, yeah, can they explain to you what's, what's maybe going on for them? If you come towards them with kind of a combative approach and looking to, you know... Accuse them, right, also, yeah. Yeah, this is something that you need to go gently with. But also, if you are feeling like you've tried that and it's not working, you can, I say school is, is a great next step, so raise it w with the school, raise it with the teacher, let them know that you're worried about your child. Yeah. yeah, because there might be resources within your child's school where they can actually get day-to-day -day support. Or a teacher might have seen something, might Absolutely. have seen bullying or something. Yeah, and you can correlate all your patterns. information. But most importantly, it, it is something that needs to be treated with a professional. So you can reach out to a therapist or a psychologist, um, but then again, that also has its, its financial means attached to it, which so. parents feel that they, can't, that they can't do. So that's why it's really helpful to get involved um, or, or to contact national resources that we have, because there are some amazing organizations and NGOs around who would see your child for a reduced fee or even for free, because we understand how significant this mental health illness is and there needs to be support in place. What are the dangers of letting it go unchecked? So if you let it get unchecked, depression is one of those things. It doesn't just get better with um, having a willingness Time, to get over it. Time unfortunately doesn't yeah. heal. It doesn't, it doesn't heal. Case, yeah. um, Time usually will heal depending on what you do with that time. So if you're going to put resources and support in place, perhaps then in time your child will learn how to cope. But to leave it untouched, to let it go, it can only worsen. And we've seen the results of it where teens get so overwhelmed that they actually just decide, That's I have no other choice but to take my own life. Too. Absolutely. So. Trust your gut as a parent. If something doesn't seem right, if it doesn't feel right, it's because it usually isn't. So trust your gut and try to address it as best as you can. Uh, an amazing piece of advice. Any final tips that you want to leave with our parents? Um, I would say, you know, we all need to kind of work on letting go of the stigma attached to mental health. Depression yeah, yeah. isn't something anybody asks for. Uh, it isn't something that you can just get over. It's not a choice. You, yeah, yeah, it's not a choice. You need support with it, and we can't be telling people to snap out of it. We actually need to be supporting people in, in the right ways to help them learn how to cope with it. Um, and the key thing is you can cope with it and you can mm. overcome it. You really can. As much as it might feel like a mountain that you need to get over right now with the right resources and help. And just by starting that dialogue, you can work through it as a parent and as a child and as a family. So make sure those bonds are strong. Open up that line of communication right now. And again, I reiterate, if you, especially if you're a young person watching this right now, if you're feeling like you've got nowhere to turn, if you feel like the walls are closing in, and you have got no answers at the ready, there is someone you can speak to right now. If it's not your parent or a friend, contact the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. They are amazing. And again, I say, trust me, they know what you are going through. They've dealt with it. They've helped people in your situation to just speak to someone. Time to get a bit of inspiration right now here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Uh, you're about to be inspired by the story of someone who's really just become so selfless in his approach to life and what he's been able to do for his community. He is the founder and coach of Geo's Dance Studio, Giovanni Stevens. He put his dancing career aside to share his love and passion with the children of Atlantis, a place that's infamous for drug use and gangsterism amongst the youth. And two of his dancers, Letara Swatz and Cameron Jarvis, now have Western province and South African colors. And they join us this morning with some hashtag Wednesday, Wednesday wisdom and Wednesday motivation. Hey. So please, everybody, welcome them with a warm espresso Woo. show. Welcome. Woohoo! Yeah. Tara and Gio, and of course, you as well, Cameron, uh, Cameron champions. Guys, so good to have you on the show. 
Thanks. Oh, they were just telling me they woke up three o'clock this morning from Atlantis to be in studio with us today. So welcome to us. But I'll start with, the, with you, Geo. Very selfless thing to start something mm. in a community that, of course, is influenced by gangsterism and True. drug abuse and mm. violence. But how did the dance studio all come about? Um, at first, I danced for a studio in Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And then a few years after that, the lady of the studio passed away. Oh. And so the whole school fell down. And it took me a few years to actually get that motivation to start the dance studio. Mm. And that's why I'm here. Mm. Cameron and Latara, you guys are you now, you know, Western province and South African colors. You have that, that's under your belt now. How does that feel for you guys? Tell me, Latara, how it feels. Very nice, really very nice. Very nice. And for you, Cameron, how was that? When you, when you got in, how did that feel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is your mom like so super proud of you guys and your yes. parents? Daddy. Yes, she what? woke up this morning with you at three o'clock. Yes. And, and Cameron, what do you enjoy most about dance? What is it about dance that really just connects with you? I like it. You like it? Yes. We like it too. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe for you, Gio, why was it so important for you to create a space like this mm. in the community and to give back to the community? Okay, at first, um, my childhood memories wasn't good, mm -hmm. so I could have been a gangster, mm. but if it wasn't for dance and God as well, oh. I wouldn't have been where I am now. And it's just for me, it's just to give back to my community mm. and change other people's lives with dance as the same as it did with me. Yeah. yeah. Gio, I mean, there are many dance forms and many different types of dance. Uh, you've chosen ballroom as your focus area. Why specifically ballroom? Okay, um, this is going to sound very weird, but at first we I like started... Weird. We like weird. I started... <laughs> I chose this dance for the girls at first, and then afterwards just the dance back bit, and it just flew off from there. When you say you chose it for the girls, what do you mean? That, you know, you got phone numbers every time they saw you, it was yes, like uh, yes, quite a... Oh, yes, really? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I love that. I love okay. that you start maybe you should start dancing. Yeah, I'm thinking now, like, okay, well, if girls are into ballroom dances, then maybe I should be doing that later today. Yeah, because dancing is uh, ballroom and Latin dancing is a gentleman sport. Ah. So at first I would grab a girl, but now because I'm a dancer, yeah. I will approach her in a proper way. Ah. Yeah. Like dancers do it. Yeah, mm. definitely. Of course, what can we expect in the near future for the dancers, for the studio, mm. for the community of Atlantis? Yeah, so um, I am busy with a new project coming on, but yeah. I will do it later on. Mm. <laughs> but they also, they doing the Western Province Colors and Essay Colors this year again. Mm. For them, they want it twice. They want it again now. Yeah. So they're going for the colors again. And we are aiming to go overseas this year as this well. Fantastic. Well, Cameron and Latara, I know that you guys are going to really give us a bit of a treat uh, a bit later on on the show. You're going to be dancing for us. Are you excited to do that? Yes, very excited. How much time have you spent practicing? A lot. A lot of time. Well, we <laughs> can't wait to see that. Lot. Well, keep it locked here on your Feel Good Breakfast show because they're going to be here. They are from Gio's Dance Studio. It's from Atlantis. Atlantis, stand up. The best of South African young talent being showcased here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. <laughs> met someone with a heart like this. He embodies what it means to be selfless. Even when I was in a state of panic, she showed me true bravery. Often the bravest people don't see themselves as others do. Join us in celebrating these brave heroes. Nominate the pharmacists and healthcare professionals in your community making a real difference and stand a chance to win 5,000 Rand.
Welcome back to it. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Express Live on SABC3. It's a beautiful Wednesday. It's hump day. Thank you so much for choosing <laughs> to start off uh, the day with us. Now, we all know that winter is the season for colds and flus. And given that we still have some time before winter comes, taking proactive steps towards boosting your immune system right now could be the answer to remaining flu-free. Now, we chat to our favorite, Dr. Darren Green, on how we can best start planning to get our immune system in tip-top shape and ready to fight off all those nasty viruses that are ah. lurking mm. around on the mm. corner. Oh. Dr. Darren Green, so good to see so you. Many morning, yeah. morning. Oh, you can say that again. And you, know, oh. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's like when you're approaching winter, yeah. you can start feeling some symptoms. Oh, you yes. know, it's 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 crazy. Why is it that we it's so easy for us to catch flus and colds, especially during winter? Mm. There are quite a few reasons. The big one obviously is the weather has a major effect on how much outdoor activity we actually do. So mm. people want to be indoors. Uh, the cold uh, obviously leads them to want to flock together. Mm. You then in confined spaces which yeah. means you're in close proximity uh, children and adults both they don't like washing their hands in winter because it's cold <laughs> yeah it's cold they don't yeah. Yeah. To the as well. as much they can. toilet seat same Ooh. principle yeah so what they do then is obviously you, you obviously flock together and in the close proximity of actually sharing the the, the different lurgies or germs that we actually have mm. and then obviously the coughing the sneezing all that on each other it's very close contact yeah and the and the, and the cold weather obviously plays a massive role in our activity level Levels. Why is it that some people are more prone to catching these viruses over winter? Why is that? Yeah, some people, well, others. people exercise less in winter. Mm. Mm. It's interesting, the paradox of the, the relationship between exercise and mm. physical fitness and getting sick. Yeah. Because if you train uh, just enough mm. to, to regulate your, your, your exercise system, your immunity actually benefits from that mm. in really? terms of your immune response. But if you train too hard, yeah. like these hardcore marathon yeah. runners that are pushing to win events yeah. and that kind of thing, you can also then, especially in the first 36 hours after a hardcore training session, yeah. mm. you're actually a little bit weaker in your immune system. Wow. So that's the period in which you have to have good principles governing mm. things like your nutrition and your hygiene, mm. etc. But we'll get to that. that that's actually very interesting. I'm not sure if this is a myth, but when you work out mm -hmm. while you have a flu or cold, it's a bad thing. It's a very bad thing. If you have a proper viral infection, mm. let's say you have influenza and you <laughs> influenza. train with it. So that means that while you are training, you are facilitating, because you weaken the body's immune system, actually further growth and, and promotion of the virus. Mm. But not only that, if the virus is spread via the blood to other organ systems like the heart, you could actually yeah. weaken the heart muscle permanently by causing what's called myocarditis. The muscle itself becomes inflamed mm. and then you could have the long-term effect like scar tissue in that muscle and then loss of function. Vulnerable. Yeah, so mm. the pump function then decreases and you could have then a changed and altered lifestyle if, if you train with a viral infection like influenza. Wow. Okay, so we hear often about uh, daily supplements and how important they can be and how important they are in helping you strengthen and boost your immune system. Why are they so important? Why is it so important to take them? I think uh, the whole topic, I mean, some people feel you don't need supplements at all. Mm. Some people feel there is definitely a place for supplementation. Mm. And the reason for that that is our lifestyles have become so crammed and busy. Mm. Everyone is trying to maximize time. So yeah. what do we do? We forget to pack lunch. It's too much That's effort true. to plan your meals. Mm. Mm. So what happens is then you don't go shopping. After work, you're exhausted. You just want to go home and, and, and chill. Yeah. And then you don't have a, a, a variety of good, healthy vegetables and fruit at home. So what happens then is you end up eating incorrectly or eating fast food, mm. skipping out all the things that give you the nutrients, the trace mm. elements, the prebiotics, the probiotics that are good for you immune system yeah. mm. to, to withstand the winter colds and flu. Mm. Yes. Now, on that note, Dr. Green, with winter, with winter approaching, what necessary steps or precautions can we take to prepare our immune system? Mm. Yeah, so the best things would be your nutrition, watch what you eat, get enough fresh fruit, yeah. fresh vegetables, firstly. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're not eating, uh, eating well, sleep is the most important in terms mm. of regulating your immune system. Mm. You should be aiming for be about seven, between seven and eight oh, hours that's sleep. Sounds like such a luxury. It's but a dream. It's a okay. necessity. <laughs> yeah. And then obviously uh, your hygiene. Your your fist pumps are better. Obviously, yes. washing your hands regularly, yeah. and also the confined spaces that you yeah. live in. 
take a, a ventilate your rooms properly get outdoors and allow sunlight obviously into your into your space mm. get moving a bit of exercise as well there you go you know you always mention this dr darren green thank you so so much Pleasure. always Pleasure. always so enlightening having you here of course winter is coming but of, well, fortunately for us we have time to prepare our immune systems from uh, any nasty viruses that may be coming our way Immuenza gives your body the support it needs to help prevent nasty colds and flus so get it get on that Looking for immune support? Remain at your peak all year round with Immuenza. Thank you so much, team. Of course, the first hour of the show has flown by, so thank you so much for joining us for that. In the second hour of the show, we're going to delve into our culinary hotline. Bling! Ding, ding, ding. Yep, we're going to be writing some of your culinary conundrums live on the show. So stick around, especially if you've submitted a question on our Facebook page. But right now, let's get back into our news headlines. Thank you so much, Dee. Let's get right into those news headlines. Now, the minimum wage in South Africa will increase by some 3.8% from the 1st of March, roughly in line with annual inflation, but far below the level that trade unions had wanted. The new national minimum wage will be set at 20 rand 76 cents per hour, Employment and Labour Minister Tulasin Kersi said yesterday. That is an, ex uh, an increase of exactly 3.8% on the previous 20 rand, which came into effect on the 1st of January last year. The new minimum wage for domestic workers is 15 rand 57 cents per hour and for farm workers it is 18 rand 68 cents per hour. Viewers should also brace themselves for the further possibility of load shedding today. Eskom said the likeliness of load shedding had increased as they had lost additional generation units due to unplanned breakdowns. The power utility said even though there have been some improvements in generation system, uh, customers are requested to continue reducing demand and to use electricity sparingly. Eskom said it would communicate regularly. And now on the international front, health officials in China have published the first details of more than 44,000 cases of the COVID-19 virus in the biggest study since the outbreak began. Data from the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention found that more than 80% of the cases have been mild, with the sick and elderly most at risk. More than 12,000 people have recovered. Uh, the research also points to the high risk to medical staff. China's latest official figures released yesterday put the overall death toll at 1,868 and 72,436 infections. In other news as well, the wife of Lesotho's Prime Minister, who is charged with murdering her predecessor, will stand trial on March 17th, a magistrate ruled yesterday. Messiah Tabane is accused of ordering the killing of Prime Minister Thomas Tabane's estranged wife, Lepolelo, who was shot dead in June 2017 near her home in Maseru. Lepolelo, then 58, and Thomas Tabane, now 80, had been going through an acrimonious divorce when she was killed, two days before her husband in inauguration as Prime Minister. Tabane and Messiah Tabane, now 42, married two months later. And now onto some positive news on bats. Now bats are erroneously believed to be evil, bloodthirsty vessels of disease. Now this reputation has put them in harm's way. Fortunately, there's someone in KwaZulu-Natal who will have nothing of this negative image. For the past 14 years, Wendy White has taken bats under her wing, no pun intended, and has nursed numerous of the injured mammals with the goal of rehabilitating them back into the wild. Now Wendy explains how vital they are to the ecosystem as 95% of the tropical rainforests are, for instance, propagated by bats. Wendy is part of the bat interest group of KwaZulu-Natal, the province that harbors 39 of South Africa's 56 bat species. The initiative is committed to protecting the creatures and dispelling myths about their nature by hosting wor workshops at schools and communities. And that's where we leave our 7 o'clock news headlines. Let's take a look at the Sport with G. Let's kick it off with Cricket Australia claiming a four-wicket win over the Proteas women in a T20 Cricket World Cup warm-up match at the Corrin Rolton Oval in Adelaide yesterday. Home side opted to bowl first and watched as South Africa's Danae van Nicker hit 67 runs from just 51 deliveries. The Nicker guiding the Proteas to 147 for six in their 20 overs. Australia replied with 150 for six with three balls to spare. The ICC Women's T20 World Cup will kick off on Friday. The Proteas will face England in their first encounter on a Sunday.
Then Olympic champion Wade van Nieuwkerk has marked his return from a career-threatening knee injury with a 100-meter race win at an unofficial university meet in Bloemfontein. The 27-year-old injured his knee during a celebrity touch rugby match in Cape Town back in 2017. Van Nieuwkerk has now made a comeback, running the 100-meter race in just 10.2 seconds. And then finally, our Tuesday night football saw Atletico Madrid stun Liverpool 1-0 at the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium and Borussia Dortmund beating Paris Saint-Germain 2-1 at Signal Iduna Park in the first leg of the UEFA Champions League round of 16. Atletico's Saul Niguez, he scored the winner as early as the fourth minute to stun the defending European champions Liverpool. In the other encounter, Erling Brauthalat scored a brace to secure the win for his side. The return legs will take place on Wednesday the 11th of March. And of course, two fixtures to look out for tonight. RB Leipzig, they go to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to take on Spurs and then Atalanta, they take on Valencia at the San Siro both matches kicking off at 10 o'clock. That's where we leave our sport for now. Let's bring you a traffic update. The time is now seven minutes past seven. Let's have the first look at what's happening on the road. Starting off with Bedford View in Gauteng, there has been a multi-vehicle accident on the N3 northbound after Linksfield Road. One lane is currently blocked. Please approach this area with caution. And down to the Western Cape, Gualanga, on the N2 inbound, there has been a multi-vehicle accident before J. Scherval Drive, obstructing the emergency lane. Please keep a look out for this. And lastly, Metro Rail Cape Flats Line, there is an extended travel time of 20 to 13 minutes on the Cape Flats line due to current infrastructure conditions and sets out of service. That's your 7 o'clock traffic roundup. Right now, let's have a look at the weather with Uncle Tabsy. Thank you very much, Kutle. Before we look at the weather, we look at your beautiful sunrise pictures we've asked you to send through. Thank you so much to Charlotte Martins for sending us this incredible sunrise from Banana Beach in KZN, where cloudy conditions are expected today with heavy rainfall and high humidity reaching a max of 22 degrees. We also got this stunning picture from Alan Rudnicki. It's a skyline, stunning skyline from Langaban in the Western Cape, where mainly sunny conditions are expected with hot temperatures reaching a max of 33 degrees. You too can do the same. Get your pictures through to us on our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show SABC3, and we'll put them on. And now we take a look at the temperatures, starting off in Bulukwane. 17 is your low today, reaching a high of 28, with high humidity out in Mbombela. 21 minimum, reaching a maximum of 30. The capital city, Pretoria, times of sun and clouds, 19 and 28, with thunderstorms expected for Johannesburg. 17, reaching a high of 27. If you're out in Mahikeng in the northwest, 18, that's where you start off peaking at 30, with Clegstop starting off at 19, reaching a high of 28 degrees. Heavy rainfall out in Kimberley today, 20 reaching a high of 28, with thunder showers out in Bloemfontein, 16 and 26. A couple of showers are expected out in Richards Bay today, 22 reaching a high of 27, with Peter Maritzburg at 18 and 22. Some thunder showers over there as well. Durban, occasional rain uh, for you, 24 reaching a high of 26, with Claudium Tata, 17 and 26. A northeasterly wind going at 28 kilometers per hour for East London, 20 reaching a high of 26 and times of sun and clouds for Craddock 17 reaching a high of 32. Easterly wind is going at 32 kilometers per hour that's for Port Elizabeth the friendly city 19 and 28 and if you're out in Georgia expect that high humidity today 20 and 28 those are your temperatures. The lowest temperatures in uh, for the start of the morning rather that's for Sutherland 15 reaching a high of 28 some thunder showers are expected today as well and if you're in the mother city Cape Town 19 and 28. In Booster the highest temperatures in the country, 18 reaching a high of 35, with Springbok starting off at 15 and peaking at 34. Expect some thunder showers over there as well. And Uppington, today your temperatures are 22, reaching a high of 33, with some thunder showers expected over there as well. That's where we leave it for now. No matter what the weather's like in your part of the country, be sure to make it a feel-good type of day. But I can tell you who are feeling very good right now. Our six smooth contestants will be joining the celebrities on the island of Curaçao for Tropica Island of Treasure. A brand new season is about to kick off. In fact, it kicks off on the 3rd of March. And we're going to see some uh, consumer contestants being paired with our celebrity contestants. We've introduced to, uh, them to you live on the show. An incredible group of vibrant, bubbly young people <laughs> who are going to need to be up for the challenge because it looks like some insane challenges have been set for them. And when we look at Kaldine Vanhart, one of those contestants, um, she warns us that dynamite comes in small packages. Ooh. Let's meet this incredible young woman. 
name is Colleen Weinhardt and I'm 26 years old. I grew up in Kales River in the northern suburbs here in Cape Town. My parents allowed me to do a lot of different things when I was a child, like different sports, even cultural activities and a lot of public speaking. So I think that definitely makes me the person that I am today. The reason I entered Tropica Island of Treasure season 9 is because I watched the previous season and it looked like so much fun and I think I really need an island vacation. How I'm preparing for the island and the challenges that are going to be there, I'm doing a lot of mental activities to keep my brain sharp and I've started hitting the gym really hard. So I'm working on my core strength and getting the upper body strength ready as well. My family is very important to me. Um, so my little sister is my biggest fan. I really love her. And uh, my close friends, like my cousin, we've grown up all the way since we've been young. So we're very close. And one of my biggest motivators is my friend Klaus. She's high energy, definitely hard working um, and always on the go somewhere. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> her chances of winning is very high for me personally, because whatever she puts her mind to, she will achieve it no matter what she does. Like, it can be doing a song in the kitchen, but she'll do it full out, yes. promise you. When we do dishes, she's a performer. She's like the Beyonce to my Kelly Rowland, kind of. No, Caldine will win this because she's got a drive like no other. Yeah. She will, she's competitive, so she will um, dust everyone off. So just get that right. <laughs> when we heard she's in Tropical Island of Treasure, we were over the moon because I still gave her my gym membership to get there. I'm really excited to be on season nine of Tropica Island of Treasure because I worked really hard for this audition and I went to the gym, I focused on my fitness and I think this year I'm way more prepared for the challenges on the island. It was good to hear because I remember a few years ago she entered and she wasn't successful and this time around so she's one of those that wouldn't give up. They all supportive of my Tropica journey. Um, they were super excited when um, I told them that I'm going to enter Tropica. And then when I finally told them that I got it, they basically jumped out of their seats. <laughs> so I think they're very excited to see what this journey holds. I'm Kaldine Weinhardt. Watch me on Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao. Coming to you soon on SABC3. Coming to you soon indeed. You can meet Kaldeen on the 3rd of March. The journey begins. Catch it live right here on 3, 7.30 every Tuesday night. I cannot wait, mm, it's G. Now find your smooth fame and fortune with Tropica by simply buying Tropica. Follow the entry details on the pack and stand a chance to win your share of 1 million rands in prizes, wow. such as a trip for two with KLM to Amsterdam, nice. LG G8 phones, TVs and dishwashers, guest vouchers, watches and accessories. Wow, and don't you forget the smooth grand prize of a Suzuki Ignis, a brand wow. new car. It could be yours. The more Tropica you buy, the more chances you have to win. It's simple and you can find all the terms and conditions that apply on tropica.co.za. Tropica, nothing smoother.
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show right here on SABC3. Happy hump day to all of you. The coolest kid on the block is in studio today. JP Sebastian is here to give us the movie trailers of 2020. But of course, hello JP. Hello. Say good morning. I like your... Thank you. Oh, that, yeah, that's why you're confused. The only thing that's cool about me is the shirt. Listen, everybody wants Honestly. to know what is your thoughts. Before we get into the movie trailers, what are your thoughts of Robert Pattinson playing Batman? Mm, so, I like the dude. Okay. Like you said, you guys were talking about how his career seems to be in the ascent on, on interesting stuff, not just vampires anymore. Uh, as far as being Batman, uh, what I do like is that his look is like he looks more like an emaciated bat compared mm. to... I don't like superheroes always looking like golden gods. <laughs> and okay. uh, what they're doing with this one, it seems, is they definitely are going to make this Batman darker and more uh, like greasy. There's more of a, like a... a a, a rougher edge to it kind of thing and I think what they're going to do beyond that this is just my prediction is make something that I think fans might not appreciate so much is that they're going to reveal that Batman is actually a bad guy everyone he's a hypocrite he's he's a billionaire who thinks he has impunity to operate as he pleases so that's that's I think the direction they're going for is that this is not the Batman you're used to at all okay, there's gonna be a bad JP, guy. this is just your opinion just a prediction just a prediction but oh wait let's get right into the movie trailers one of them being Bukharao correct yes Bukharao Bacurau is uh, named after, if I'm not mistaken, a tiny dorp in yeah. Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the Amazon, and so this is a Brazilian movie. And Ooh, it looks, bad, uh, that is a very colorful poster. Man, that makes me want to carnival, I suppose. No, I, I'm not going to dance for anyone, I promise. <laughs> and the story is hard to explain because it's what you actually call genre-wise a weird western. This is actually what you refer to these things to. It's modern day but it has all the feelings of the bandits roll into town and the townspeople have to rise up and try and defend themselves against this new encroaching threat. You've got these extractive meanies who are just there to exploit the resources on the Amazon. Haha, ha, this sounds very, very present day, doesn't it? Mm. And uh, the, the tiny local people have to try and band together and, and deal with the menace. Uh, it's not as simple as I make it out though because while it does look pretty straight down the line, modern day and like I said, semi-Western in some ways for, for reasons we are not totally Totally sure about yet. UFOs do appear at one point. So in the movie, it looks like it becomes totally bonkers, totally bananas, which I love, which I appreciate. If you love stuff like Jodorowsky's Al Topo, if you love stuff like even modern day in South Africa, we had so the winter to my skin stuff that's unashamed and un, uh, uh, not afraid to be as weird as it likes. And especially if you're trying to write about the current political climate, this the directors were interested in the new fascist president, but. Jair Bolsonaro, who is not being kind to the small man in the rural areas, and especially the Amazon jungle itself. Udo Kier is back. He's a lovely actor. And it looks like it's going to be a very special, totally weird offering from Brazil. As weird as stuff like UFOs in the middle of it, yes, obviously people have to take drugs during a situation like this. Clearly. Because it's clearly a surreal movie. Um, weird as it seems, it actually, from other footage I've also seen, looks excellently shot. It looks so, so well made, and surely is going to be a great little independent offering from the country of Brazil. No date for it in SA just yet. Just yet. But there is a date for the next movie, which is The Green Knight. Green Knight. Green Knight looks so good. Dev Patel. I love when you get excited about uh, I'm, I, it. Like, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm a, a film nerd, I suppose, so when you see A24 on a poster, that's, that's a studio that... Uh, A24? You, that's the name of a, like an independent New York studio, and they've just been knocking it out of the park. They're the reason Moonlight won. They're the reason for a lot of small movies just... Killing the scene. Screwing over gigantic studios. Uh, so very interesting stuff they constantly make. And The Green Knight is based on a, a British poem about the Green Knight, who uh, was an enemy of the Knight Gawain, who was one of Sir Arthur's, I'm trying to get this really right, really correct, which is why I'm stuttering, one of the Knights of the Round Table, and he takes up the challenge from the Green Knight, who is this mysterious creature. Yes, look how weird this is. Look how trippy this is. Who uh, enters uh, Sir Arthur's court and issues a challenge to the Knights. He mm -hmm. says, anyone here who dares to take my head, try if you might, and I will give you a year in which I will return and take your head, which makes no sense. You, he's to give, issuing a challenge to kill him, and then turns around, obviously. So you've got Dev Patalio, who's the guy who picks up the challenge, and then a year later has to go search out the Green Knight himself and face the possibility of getting his own head chopped off as part of the contract. Sounds weird as it all is, but obviously it's like a code of chivalry. You have to stick to the contract you made. You can't dishonor uh, your, your, your king mm. by being non-courageous and not sticking to the terms that you set out. Alicia Vikander, great actress. Uh, Joel Edgerton is also great, and Dev Patel is on the right. 
rise and everything from us. Look at this. This looks like something from Pan's it's, Labyrinth. No, Game of Thrones even. I would even say Game of Thrones. I, I, I didn't follow Game of Thrones so okay, closely, but, uh, but someone was telling me it looks like a certain looks, creature in it there. It does, it does. Not so. the White Walkers, but another dude. Another one, yeah. Okay. Definitely. But I'm so, so excited for that movie. It's it's going to be... Oh, you can't tell from the trailer immediately if it's going to be horror or if it's going to be fantasy. It's going to walk this interesting fine line in the middle, I'm pretty sure. Always like that mystery of keeping us entertained. But of course, JP Sebastian will be back later with a movie trailer that is to be released this year. But right now, let's get into the kitchen with Uncle Tabsy. Oh, yes, my favorite place to be. Welcome back to another edition of the Culinary Hotline Ling. Ting, ting, ting. Oh, yes, we're all about inspiring you when it comes to anything and everything that's got to do with the kitchen. And today we're joined by our kitchen fairy. Of course, I'm talking about Nicole Snelling and, of course, our resident foodie, Anel Potgieter. They're here to answer any questions that you might have, any conundrums that you face in the kitchen. Get your questions through to them on Facebook, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. So, in fact, we're getting into it now because we've got a question that was asked ladies yeah. people are always asking questions and wanting you guys to solve their problems and their conundrums this one comes to, uh, from Josephine Pigstone who says uh, I would love to make a fruit pizza any suggestion how to go about it how do you make a fruit <laughs> pizza? It's, and you guys seemingly have uh, prepared some tips it's here, such right? a debate because people are very anti-fruit on a pizza, mm. but if yeah. you turn it into more of like a dessert, yeah. then you definitely have a winner. Yeah, Anel, did you like oh, a fruit pizza? I love a fruit pizza. Yeah. Just, just close your eyes, imagine this. Imagine this beautiful pizza base mm. with some cream cheese on it, mm. with some ripe figs mm -hmm. standing up straight, with a bit of mm. um, honey oh, over it, mm. and prosciutto, and you zip it in the other Heaven. oven for a minute, and then Heaven. really, a glass of wine. You actually uh -huh. don't even need it to keep it only Thank just you. for dessert. You really literally could have it as a main dish, exactly. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, so Definitely. what are we going to be doing? How are we going to be sorting out uh, Josephine's uh, conundrum here? So now it's going to be making a simple pizza dough. Yeah. You just need flour, water, salt, and a little bit of oil. I always find that the oil gives a pizza dough a very nice, rich texture, and it also makes it super elastic. Mm. Yeah. So this is not self-raising flour. This is normal flour. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we don't put any yeast in here, no. no. Could you use self-raising flour, though? Oh, you're going to get like a thick pizza base, but I oh, won't suggest okay. it. I really won't. So to get the perfect thin pizza base, you want to use normal flour, not yeah. self-raising, no yeast either. Unless you want a thick base. I mean, you do yeah. get the thick base lovers out there. Yeah. You know, then you, you would add your, your yeast and yeah. then would let it rise, essentially. Yeah. But this is fuss-free, so yeah. this mm. is really easy. So you just mix this all together with a, a pinch of salt. And then what I normally do, I let it rest yeah. so the gluten can develop. Can set, yeah. Yes, yes. And you can actually easily roll it out because you want a beautiful elastic dough. Mm. You don't want like a like a stiff dough. Yeah. You know? What are yeah. some of the most commonly made mistakes when it comes to people making pizza, especially fruit pizzas? Yeah. What, do, what do people get wrong all the time? I think, you know, what people do is because normally it's got like a wet base, like yeah. cream cheese or cream or something. Mm. They make it beforehand. So you cannot make it beforehand. Mm. You, you must actually make your base. Yeah. And like Nicole, Nicole is doing... Nicole, what is Nicole, going, Nicole, 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 <laughs> Nicole. Um, you cannot prepare it beforehand. Yeah. You have to prepare it as your guests sit down okay. on the thing. Yeah. And then if you don't want to use a pizza base, you can use cookie dough. Yeah. Oh, to make like could a you do that? Yeah. Mm. And oh, you, you have to bake it beforehand. Yeah, oh, cookie dough, that. and then you can just put your toppings on, on top instead of popping it back into the oven. I love it. And some people that want to do fruit pizza, yeah. you can use uh, watermelon as well. Yeah. Oh, just to slice oh, it so that's also a very nice this option. This is fantastic. Well, if you want to get your hands on this recipe, SMS pizza to 33728. That's pizza to 33728. We'll send you an SMS with a link to the recipe and, of course, all the different ingredients. There aren't many ingredients. It's an easy one to make, mm -hmm. yeah. but absolutely impressive because I mean let's think about it. I've never I don't think I've ever had a fruit pizza in my life so if somebody oh, made that for on. me at their house I would be so blown away where to have be you honest. Been? I'd be so where, impressed and, and what stone have you left <laughs> we don't past? have fruit pizzas in Hammanskraft <laughs> <laughs> that's my go-to excuse every time I haven't tried anything it's not, it's not but we enough. don't have that in Hammanskraft people at Hammanskraft probably think so I'm this one we them. literally have a hazelnut chocolate spread on nice. and mm. massive dollops of peanut butter because mm. as you can see in the oven it just melts yeah. right away and spreads right and spreads yeah so simple simple pizza I'll I love it I would serve this with like cream that's 
whipped up with vanilla, yeah. like a Chantilly cream on top of it. Yeah. Um, nah, Can you talking. just mm -hmm. imagine? The nice thing yeah. about something as unconventional as a fruit pizza as well is that you really can make it your own. You can yes. play with it. You can really yeah. just like spice it up, add some mint leaves, decorate yeah. it, make it, a, make it a thing, make yeah. it a production. You were talking about tips as well. Another thing that people need to do with a fruit baked pizza yeah. is first to bake your pizza base. Okay. It has to be baked a bit before. Okay. Because fruit bakes very easily. Yeah. So you bake it once and then you bake it twice with your ingredients on it. Mm -hmm. What fruit would you say people must absolutely not try have on a fruit pizza? Just don't don't do a fruit pizza yeah. with those fruits. Um, I would say I, I would know. I would say anything that's anything. too watery, like yeah. spun speck or yeah. vatle moon, you can't put them in the oven. You yeah. can use it raw. But when it when it gets into the oven, it's gonna yeah. the water is going to it's gonna going to pour out of your, your, your uh, fruit okay. and it's going to wet the whole pizza. So mess. more stuff like, I will say, peaches, mm. pears, mm. Um, you can even use pineapple. Yeah, the more but dry I ones. Char grill them though. Mm. Char grill them and they will just bring out those natural sweetnesses. Oh, and yeah. yeah, that's I better than a raw it. fruit. Are we going to have a taste? It. Come we on, are gonna have a taste. We're definitely nice. going to have a taste. But listen, Josephine, hopefully this, you cut it for us, please, Nicole. Hopefully this sorts you out. Don't go away because when we do come back a bit later on, we're going to be answering more of your burning foodie questions. Get them through to us on Facebook, Espresso Morning Show, SABC3, because we'll be back with another edition of the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ting, ting, ting. Oh, yes, let's taste this. Yeah. Ah. Oh, yes. It's oh, a black yes. Hat. Oh, yes. Your first this one. This is the one. Tropical Island of Treasure is back for a ninth season, and this time around, we're coming to you from the Dutch Caribbean island of Curacao. Here, six celebrities and six smooth fans will pair up to compete for fame and fortune and the smoothest treasure of all, a shared one million rand. Three, two, one, go! Catch the new season of Tropical Island of Treasure Curacao every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. from the 3rd of March on SABC3. It's my feel good work this show. Welcome back, you beautiful people, to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is Expresso Live on SABC3. Now, last week, we let you know that some major tech companies are withdrawing from MWC. Well, now the GSMA, the organization that puts on a Mobile World Congress every year, said that it is canceling the MWC 2020. Obviously, over coronavirus concerns, it was scheduled to run from the 24th of Feb until the 27th of Feb. Now, every year, over 100,000 technology journalists, exhibitors, and 
salespeople descend on Barcelona, where the world's biggest tech companies reveal the latest and greatest of their devices. A big reason for GSMA's concern is the fact that a very large percentage of that number are people that are not, that are either based in China or works for Chinese-based companies. Which makes sense, right? Because mm. it's tech and it's China. China yeah. tech, same, same WhatsApp group. Now, the number of confirmed cases of coronavirus by the Chinese government currently stands at 42,000, and we have been reporting in the news that over 1,700 of those have unfortunately died, and many countries around the world have instituted travel restrictions to and from China, with several private airline companies also choosing not to fly those routes through China. Mm. So it's quite serious, and it's affecting everyone across the board. It's absolutely mm. serious, man, and also it certainly is sad to see that the biggest mobile technology conference in the entire mm. world not mm. being held this year, but if there are real threats of the virus spreading to Europe as a result of such a show, then I suppose I understand where they yeah. are coming from because with such large numbers of people from China who yeah. are infected by the virus, I mean, it is putting other people at risk. Absolutely. And so you do want to make sure that you keep everybody safe and protected from potentially contracting or catching uh, the coronavirus. But that's where we leave our tech stories for this morning. Uh, have you seen any interesting tech news? Mm. Let us know. We'd like to hear from you. Share them with us on our Facebook. Facebook page. Remember to use that hashtag Expresso Show. Mm. And I am taking a moment to take that in because it, it really does, I think, spread fear, obviously, but I'm trying to wrap my head around what exactly is going on, why we are so yeah. fearful of something that as yet hasn't touched down in South Africa, but there is definitely um, a reason to be alarmed when we look at the global statistics. December 2019 saw the world go into mass hysteria, nothing short of that, as health experts scrambled to understand, track and contain the deadly new coronavirus. Now, although the first outbreak can be traced back to Wuhan in China. The disease has traveled far and wide and major cities like London have reported um, serial spikes in over-the-counter uh, medications as citygoers attempt to prevent the deadly disease from spreading. And here to share more insights on the coronavirus is Nicole Jennings, our, farm, our friend at Pharma Dynamics, leading healthcare providers. And um, you guys are great at tracking the bigger medical trends, which is why we love having our connection to you. So, Nicole... Um, First of all, congratulations on the new little girl that's oh, entered into your world. Um, there's nothing absolutely better than that. So, so enjoy that. But bringing us firmly back down to earth, mass hysteria. Can we try and put this into one <clears throat> perspective, one picture now? Can you recap the spread of the coronavirus? What is going on in the world as we speak? Sure. So it's believed that the virus uh, started at a wet market in Wuhan, China. It's a respiratory tract infection. Um, and one of the major fear drivers, I think, with this coronavirus in particular is the fact that there isn't currently a vaccine and there also isn't a, a specific viral treatment to combat the viruses yet. One thing that I want to stress is that antibiotics should be used for only bacterial infection because that is something that's also, you know, we are seeing a spike in antibiotic use. And of course, this again contributes to antibiotic resistance. So yes, it is very scary and there is no vaccination available, but do take care not to use treatments that can actually cause more harm in other areas, um, you know, in the medical Antibiotics mm. aren't the answer for, for a, a virus. virus. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Something we've noticed as well, and you guys have noticed this, in the UK, uh, surge prices have spiked by 688% for <laughs> the nasal spray. Yeah. Is this a form of preventative for the disease or how does this work for help? the disease? Can it help? So this nasal spray is made of a natural vegetable powder called hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose powder. Mm -hmm. uh, the powder is marketed uh, globally as nasal ease and in South Africa, Pharma Dynamics markets this product as Nexa Shield. There's clinical data that shows that this powder can block an airborne virus. There's no clinical data yet for the coronavirus because research has not been done on prevention that. of the coronavirus in particular. But in terms of blocking a, a, an airborne virus in general, you know, there's ample clinical studies that show that this powder is effective. Um, I think, you know, we can't say it's indicated to block this virus, but all we can say is I think in the UK, seeing that spike, consumers are making the conclusion that if this can block one viral infection, yeah. you know, let's attempt it. Respiratory is respiratory. Um, what else can it help with? 
All right, so it, it also, it's also indicated for allergy. So essentially what happens is this powder enters the nasal, nasal cavity and it then forms a gel barrier. And this barrier blocks allergens and viral infection. And so it's marketed for allergies, for cold and flu, and for, there's a travel one specifically for people to take before they board a plane, just to give you a little bit of extra protection, um, you know, given the fact that you are sort of... In um, close proximity, in, in a closed, closed environment. Yesterday we reported in the news, actually, Bill Gates said that uh, should the coronavirus come to Africa, about 10 million people would be affected. It has, God forbid, not come to South well, Africa yet. Yeah, it's, but it's touched it, down it, in it, Egypt now. They've had their first reported case, so it's on the continent. It is on the <laughs> continent. But now what preventatives can South Africans and Africans take into preventing that they get the virus? And if they are traveling to red zone countries, uh, what, what can they do? Okay. Um, for viral infections in general, good rule of thumb is personal hygiene. So just washing your hands regularly for 20 seconds with um, soapy water. You can also use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Then look for something that's about 60% in terms of alcohol content. <clears throat> You can, you know, there's a lot of controversy around the wearing of masks. Mm. Um, it's very technical the way that the mask must be handled in order to prevent the virus. Um, and also there is a bit of a shortage of masks at this point. So the World Health Organization has actually said, if you are healthy and you're not taking care of someone who's been infected with the virus, don't use a mask, you know, because there's, there's cases now where healthcare professionals who need to take care of people Aren't are not able, able to get quality products. <laughs> it's very similar wow. for antibiotics in that regard. Don't misuse antibiotics now in an attempt not to, to contract the virus and ultimately then we create more antibiotic resistance. I think a take-out message is medicine is precious, you know, so let's take care not to use things that aren't indicated. If nothing else, this is creating tighter bonds within the global village. Um, <laughs> but we, we don't want to be fear mongers. We want to just spread a message of education, of understanding how airborne viruses work and what you can do. Um, and I think the, the Nexus Shield is a great place to start if you are feeling that anxiety. Um, while South Africa is not an immediate threat for the coronavirus, it is always in um, your best interest, I think, to practice good hygiene, take the right preventative measures. The more information on Nexus, uh, um, the Shield nasal spray, you can visit nexusshield.co.za. Just stay healthy, South Africa. Pharma Dynamics, effective, affordable health care. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You're on SABC3. You are locked on um, your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, we are talking movie reviews for 2020, and none other than our movie guru, JP Sebastian, is here in the hot seat to let us in about all the details. Little woman, JP Sebastian, tell us all about it. Yeah, so we've had one before, and this movie is obviously interesting after the Oscars since Greta Gerwig was not uh, noticed for a 
for a director's nomination. Emma Watson, obviously, who people know from Harry Potter. You've got Saoirse Ronan, who was nominated for Best Actress this year as well. You have uh, Florence Pugh, who was nominated for Supporting Actress, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, before I get into the meat and potatoes about it all, uh, it's a uh, based on the famous book, of course, and one of the names I just mentioned, Florence Pugh, for me, is the jewel in the crown of the movie. So let's look at a scene of her from Little Women. Let's check it out. Always known I would marry Rich. Why should I be ashamed of that? It's nothing to be ashamed of, as long as you love him. Well, I believe we have some power over who we love. It isn't something that just happens to a person. I think the poets might disagree. Well, I'm not a poet. I'm just a woman. And as a woman, there's no way for me to make my own money. Not enough to earn a living or to support my family. And if I had my own money, which I don't, that money would belong to my husband the moment we got married. And if we had children, they would be his, not mine. They would be his property. So don't sit there and tell me that marriage isn't an economic proposition, because it is. It may not be for you, but it most certainly is for me. Mm. I want to watch it. That mm -hmm. little clip mm -hmm. made me want to watch it. And so that's one of the most important, I think, gifts that Greta Gerwig, who also wrote the screenplay, or adapted the screenplay, obviously, from the famous novel, uh, that she brings to the table with this new uh, version of the, the story, is that she centers more strongly the material basis of a woman's life, rather than just Timothy Chalamet is there, is like, oh, but the poets say love is supposed to be this and that. The movie starts off with Saoirse Ronan, who plays Joe March, just trying to sell her novel, and she's not precious about the content of the novel, she's not precious about the soul and the spirit of it. Like, movies are obviously uh, like generally like, oh, woe is me, oh, Let's, no. well, I'm trying to just put myself out there kind of thing. And true, people do want to. But when you're a woman, you have to just think about keeping your head above the water in the way our society has been structured to privilege men above everything else. And especially if you're an artist, if you're a creative person, as you've seen here, she's at the publishers in that one scene, and she's just like, look, edit it all you want. Cut, chop, whatever you like. I just need to get the book out. And in the same way, then Florence Pugh makes that, that case too. So the movie jumps between these two timelines. You'll see one is all like honey glowing yellow, and the other one looks like it's overcast at all times. Overcast one's present, and the honey glowed yellow is almost a fondly remembered past. And Joe March, who you just looked at there, Saoirse Ronan messing up her sister's hair, is remembering all these things because she has to go back to him, home to her sister Beth, back at the family home who has been gravely ill, and this might be the time. Other sister, played by Florence Pugh, is off in uh, France, and she's learning how to paint. All of these sisters want more than to just be, you know, poppies, hmm. just to be someone's accessory, just to be someone's asset. And Speak up for the women! On the world. Yes, and yeah. Greta Gerwig is at, uh, makes no no you know bones about doing that in all of the mo her movies she does. Last one was Lady Bird, which is marvelous, and Little Women is also uh, excellent. Me, oh, man, there's his face again. People love him so dearly. Timothy Chalamet is one of the first problems for me about this movie. Greta Gerwig loves him and loves Saoirse Sharon so dearly that I think that she's so happy to see her faves on screen very often, just play, and that's cute and whatever. But uh, you've got to you know force some sort of structure on them. So Timothy Chalamet is not a bad actor, but he's kind of under under treated in this, which is good in a way because it does take the focus off the man just throwing a gaze all the time and longing over the women. The women are front and center of the story. Mm. And, uh, but then yeah, on the it's other it's not about them, it's all about the women. Yes, and so in fact, uh, every time a man is shown, it's always show, showing him longing for, and not him building his own destiny, carving his own while the women are sidelined. That's just a function to him, but he's stepping stone kind of thing. Emma Watson on the other hand is also kind of undertreated, but as I- She looks very undertreated. Looks she, like she's like a back. She almost feels like she's a different part of, she's not even from from the same family kind of thing. It's not a total waste of a character, but Saoirse Ronan, who you're looking at there, and Florence Pugh are, I already used the term, are the jewels in the crown of this movie. Florence Pugh was robbed of the Oscar by her co-star, Laura Dern, who also appears in this. Laura Dern obviously won for Marriage Story, but Florence Pugh should have taken it, taken it, taken it. You cannot, when you're watching Little Women, take your eyes off her. She is hilarious, she is adorable, and she is one of the most human actors of her generation that I've seen. Saoirse Ronan, on the other hand, no. there's nothing bad you can say about Saoirse Ronan. Like I said, during Oscar season, she's been nominated what five times before the age of 24, so she she doesn't need any words from me. Two very very strong actresses at the front, and that's practically all you need. The costumes are beautiful. I think it won cost beautiful. costumes as well. But we just had a look at Florence Pugh. Tell you what, maybe I should show you Saoirse Ronan as well. And let's talk to those serious women shows though. The movie also does have it's it's you know it's got its own lightness too. JP's just showing you the the prana and the dread because that stuff counts as well. So you're Saoirse Ronan from Little Women. I just, I just feel, I just feel like 
women, they, they have minds and they have souls as well as just hearts and they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty and I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. But I'm, I'm so lonely. In the fields, I feel like it's really going to be one of and the and it, if I may, and yeah, and yeah. it is deeply appreciated. Like I said, it was said to have been snubbed for director, which should, uh, Greta Gerwig should have been nominated. It also she was robbed by uh, Jojo Rabbit, which wasn't as strong for adapted screenplay. Little Women should have won it. And uh, what's also great about that scene you just saw there is it's not just you know charging lectures about what women should and shouldn't have. They're human as well because she she says I'm lonely as well. I'm lonely. It's Absolutely. not just you know, for like some sort of victory charge of oh, I want the world this way and that way. It's like it's complicated, mm. but. As a belief, as a star, please just listen. Listen. And so, the score, very right? very interested to hear what is your score, popcorn score, for this movie. So, Lady Bird, her last movie, I gave 10 out of 10. So, a slide down to 8 out of 10 is not too bad at all. Not a, for you, because you're usually like a 6, 7. I, I'm, I'm stingy, man. You might even call me a misogynist. I steal popcorns from everyone. Men, women, children movies, I don't care. Oh. But Little Women is marvellous. Seriously, go watch it. These actors. Florence Pugh, man, what a future she has ahead of her. Watch Midsummer as well, which she also should have been nominated for. Little Women, she should have won the Oscar for, though. Oh, well, that is JP Sebastian on a movie review for 2020. Little Woman, go and check it out and let us know what you think about it. Welcome back to the Culinary Hotline Ting, 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 ting! Oh yes, it's a beautiful Wednesday morning and we're answering all your burning questions on our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. We've got a resident kitchen food fairy over here. It's Nicole Snelling and of course our resident foodie, Anel Potgieter, here to answer your questions. There's more questions for you ladies, okay? Yes, so this on. one is from Erica Peterson Felix, who says, Good morning, guys. I'm new to the whole baking scene, covers eyes. Please tell me how to make marshmallow topping for cupcakes. Yeah, it's a delicious one. It Those is very ones delicious. You, like, eat it and you go crossing all over your nose. But it's also really simple for someone who might be familiar with it to think, oh, no, that's very simple to do. Why would you not know how to do that? When she spoke about marshmallow frosting, I was thinking we're going to get a whole big bowl of marshmallows. Yeah, yeah. we're going to melt them. them. That's what I thought. Some sugars. That's what I thought. But, but that is a fondant. Uh, you make it. No, marshmallow okay. fondant. No, no. So um, that would be, obviously, when you're yeah, working. Yeah, fondant. Yes, yeah, 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 that's yeah. Fondant, you do get marshmallow right. fondant. But this is called marshmallow frosting because it's made in the same way as a marshmallow and you get the same texture. So if I pipe a little bit over there, uh -huh. you're going to oh, get that you. little like marshmallow There we go. Okay. Texture. I yeah. oh, 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 thank you. Thanks for that. Oh, I never know with you. I never know whether to lick or hide or run. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So how do we um, answer uh, Erica Peterson Felix's question? What do we need to do? What does she need okay, to do? So Anal's going to be whipping up some egg whites, egg whites. Mm -hmm. which is the first step. Yeah. And once it's nice and fluffy we've made a syrup mm. so you get different types of meringues okay. so this one is an Italian meringue where you use the syrup mm. and then you get a Swiss meringue which you would do it over a double boiler okay so now I'll just throw in some um, cream of tartar which stabilizes your egg whites and I'm gonna take the syrup okay what have you, how have you made your syrup? This is literally just water and sugar. So we've cooked it down oh, into like much. a beautiful consistency. Nice. So how do you get that it doesn't crystallize? Yes. You don't yes. stir it. Oh, so you just don't let stir it just it. do its own thing. Yeah. Don't interfere. Okay, is this, okay, is this like soft peak? You must get it to yes. the soft peak stage. Okay, now this is your... So I'll just keep going. Now it's just going to keep going. So you're adding that syrup to the egg white. Okay. Okay. And because your syrup is hot, so we saw, yeah. it's going to cook your egg white. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. I see what's happening here. So now we're eating bacteria. Yeah. No, none of those surprises coming through. Well, listen, if you want to get your hands on this recipe, it's a pretty simple oh. one, as you've seen. Uh, you need to SMS the keyword SWEET to 33728. Oh, wow. Simply SMS SWEET to 33728. And then you'd put it into like a piping, a, a piping bag. bag. If you don't have a piping bag, use like a little plastic uh, zipper bag. Yeah. And you just cut a hole in the tip and you can use that as well. Don't need to go all fancy. Yeah. Nicole, I've always got a problem. I've got a, a piping bag like this. Yeah. And when I put this stuff in, eventually everything Overflows and my and whole, and like it's all my, spilling all my over. hands. How yeah. do I pop? How do I get it in so beautifully mm -hmm. like this? So you would put this in a mug or a glass okay. or a bowl and you turn it inside out like this. Oh, okay. So you give yourself enough 
enough space. Yeah. yeah. Then you fill it. A mug helps, I suppose, because Anel, otherwise what you're doing is you're trying to fill it and you're squeezing it at the same time. <laughs> That's why it never works, Anel. Yes. Must we teach you everything? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a mess in my I love kitchen. it. Yeah. But it sounds like something I would do, and I'm sure a lot of people yeah. do get it wrong yeah. with the piping And as also, well. cut your, your tip off at the last minute. Yeah. Because sometimes what people also do, especially with melted chocolate, mm. they're filling it and they're filling and they're wondering, oh my gosh, this thing's never getting full because oh. it's all running out at the and bottom. that's exactly <laughs> what you don't want happening. Well, SMS yeah. the keyword sweet to 33728. We'll send you an SMS with a link to the recipe and, uh, and that's, that's how you make it. Okay, fantastic. That so this is, this is done. What do we do? What's our final mm. touch? Everyone loves a good toasted mm -hmm. marshmallow. I do. So yeah. I've given you the honors of yes, toasting it. my favorite. You so if you have a oh, oh. Yes. blow torch, you perfect. want to keep it from a far distance. You'll see how Ooh. quickly it, it browns. It literally starts... It, yeah. it comes to life, do you Turn see? Turn it around so people can see what it looks like, Tabiso. Oh, okay, beautiful. let's not burn the kitchen and everyone in it. So this just gives it a beautiful Christmas. <laughs> whoa, 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 fire extinguisher, my dear. <laughs> okay. Incredible. Stunning. This is stunning. Okay, this one. And it just gives that beautiful oh. finishing nice touch. Can you yeah. the smoky one? Smoked. <laughs> Smoked marshmallow oh. topping. You're well, the real bry effect. Ah, uh, yes. But that's it. It's an authentic, it's an authentic South African flavor. Uh, of course, that's sweet to 33728 if you want to get your, uh, uh, your hands on this recipe. And of course, stay tuned because when we do come back a bit later on, we're going to be making sure that we answer some of your questions, your culinary conundrums on the culinary hotline. Bling! Ten, ten, ten. Get them through to us on our Facebook page, Express or Morning Show, SABC3. Take time out to explore the bush with outstanding offers from the Protea Hotel by Marriott Kruger Gate. Awake in safari lodge style on the banks of the Sabi River, you offer including dinner, bed and breakfast, a tribal African revived spa massage and a 100 rand pool deck cocktail voucher. With rooms from 3,600 rand a night, take five on the wild side at the Protea Hotel by Marriott Kruger Gate. Welcome back. You're live with Expresso and your timing is perfect. Earlier, we introduced you to two phenomenal young dancers, Latara and Cameron. They both have their provincial and national colors, and you're about to find out why as they give us their rendition of the cha-cha-cha. <laughs> Es alguien que te vuelva a enamorar, que no te haga sentir mal. Sé que hubo otro que no supo valorar lo que tenías para dar. Y sé que tal vez te hizo sufrir, te hizo llorar, te supo lastimar. Sé que tal vez ya sabes de mí, 
Voy detrás de ti, no te voy a mentir. Voy buscando una lady, como tú la quiero así. Quiero que te enamores, como estoy yo de ti. Acá es enviarte flores y en tu nombre escribir mil canciones de amores. Para que pienses en mí, como yo pienso en ti. Una estrella traerte hasta el cielo bajarte Cantarte al oído y ver tu piel al erizarte Llevarte lentamente donde estemos tú y yo aparte Y si te provoca, te beso la boca Sueño con tocarte, quitarte la ropa Me confunde mi intención por decir cosas locas Te quiero pero tu cuerpo también me provoca Poderte complacer, cada uno de tus sueños conocer Hablar con tus hasta el amanecer Que si eres mi mujer, si yo lo único que te dé placer Cada día de mi vida yo poderte Voy buscando una lady como tú la quiero así Quiero que te enamores como estoy yo de ti Acá es enviarte flores y en tu nombre escribir Mil canciones de amores pa' que pienses en mí Voy buscando una lady como tú la quiero así Quiero que te Es alguien que te vuelva a enamorar, que no te haga sentir mal. Tara and Cameron, you're so serious, dude. You got such a serious face. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for blessing us with your talents. I think can we get another round of applause for Giovanni Stevens? <laughs> Gio setting aside his uh, own professional career to pour his efforts, his love into inspirational young dancers like this, helping them achieve something truly special. And when you see the kind of chemistry, just the connection that you two have and how well you treat each other, especially seeing a young man like you treating a young woman so well, that is an amazing thing. That's why we love dance, why we love ballroom, why we love Latin. And of course, we're gonna bring you more of that this morning. They're gonna be dancing a rumba a little bit later. Thank you very much, Graham. Let's take a look at the news headlines. The Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, Prasa, says it is working on restoring some of its networks that had to be closed due to vandalism and theft. These include the rail lines between Mabopani and Pretoria and the central line in Cape Town. Prasa Administrator Bongiziwe Mbondo says that they hope to be back in service by April next year. Mbondo says that some of their plans include, include building four-meter-high walls and deploying more security personnel to protect infrastructure. The minimum wage in South Africa will increase by some 3.8% from the 1st of March, roughly in line with annual inflation, but far below the levels trade unions had wanted. The new national minimum wage will be set at 20 rand 76 cents per hour, Employment and Labor Minister Tulas Nglesi says yesterday. Now, this is an increase of exactly 3.8% on the previous 20 rand, which came into effect on the 1st of January last year. The new minimum wage for domestic workers is 15 rand 57 cents per hour, and for farm workers, 18 rand 68 cents per hour. In international headlines, 12 members of an armed group died in a clash with UN peacekeepers and government troops in the northeast of the Central African Republic, authorities said yesterday. The fighting erupted on Sunday after the Popular Front for the Renaissance of Central Africa, the FPRC entered the flashpoint town of Biaro, or rather Birao, before being repelled. The toll was 12 dead on the side of the FPRC. The former French colony is bracing for presidential elections in December. Health officials in China have published the first details of more than 44,000 cases of COVID-19 in the biggest study since the outbreak began. Data from the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention found that more than 80% of the cases have been mild, with the sick and elderly most at risk. More than 12,000 people have recovered, and the research also points to the high risk to medical staff. China's latest official fig figures released yesterday put the toll uh, death over 1,800 
1,878 and 72,436 infections. And now an item on those diligent men and women who put their lives on the line to combat poaching. Sandparks Rangers are at the front line of an ongoing war against poachers as most rhinos are killed in or near the Kruger National Park. Their air wing team takes the fight to the sky. With helicopters, the rangers are able to keep stock of the animals in the Kruger, spot all sorts of problems and combat poachers on a much faster time scale. But such operations involve high costs and fuel costs from a third of these expenses, or rather they do form a third of these expenses. And to answer all of this, the international oil company Total, which has been involved with Sandparks for 61 years, sponsors all the fuel needs of the air wing. And as chief pilot Yako Moll said, and we quote, the oil company's backing has ensured a huge boost in the efficiency of our operations from the sky. And now a look at the world of entertainment. The makeup artist who is assigned to keep wax figures at the London branch of Madame Tussauds clean, Emma Mihan, has revealed which fi figure is most kissed by visitors. And you'll never guess who it is. The male singer who gets lip gloss cleaned off his face every hour is none other than Ali Murs. More on this story later in our full entertainment report. That's where we leave it for now. Here's Graham with a final look at your sports. Thank you so much, Tubbsy. Let's kick it off with Cricket Australia claimed before we get win over the Proteus Women in a T20 Cricket World Cup warm-up match that played out at the Corrin Rowan Oval in Adelaide yesterday. Home side opting to bowl first and watching South Africa's Danae Finnecker hit 67 runs from just 51 deliveries. Finnecker guided the Proteus to 147 for 6 in their 20 overs. Australia replied with 150 for 6 with 3 balls to spare. That ICC Women's T20 World Cup kicks off on Friday with the Proteus facing England in their first encounter on Sunday. And some fantastic news on the athletics front. Olympic champion and record holder Wade Van Gogh has marked his return from a career threatening knee injury with a 100 meter race win at an unofficial university meet in Bloemfontein. The 27 year old injured his knee during a celebrity touch rugby match in Cape Town back in 2017. Well, Van Gogh has now made a comeback running the 100 meter race in just 10.2 seconds. And then finally, Tuesday night football saw Atletico Madrid stun Liverpool 1 0 at the Wonder Metropolitana State. And Borussia Dortmund beating Paris Saint Germain 2 1 at the Signal Iduna Park in the first leg of the UEFA Champions League round of 16. It was Atletico's Saul Niguez who scored the winner as early as the fourth minute to stun the defending European champions Liverpool. In the other encounter, Erling Braut Haaland scoring a brace to secure the win for his side. So the return leagues will take place on Wednesday, the 11th of March. And then, of course, tonight it's Spurs up against uh, Leipzig and Atalanta up against Valencia. Both matches kicking off at 10 o'clock and that's a wrap of your sport for this morning. It's three minutes past eight. It's time to have the final look at the roads this morning, starting off in Bedford View. Gaudeng, there are two accidents on the N3 northbound after, well, rather between the N12 Alberon and the Edenvale exit. Two lanes are obstructed and cause, causing massive delays. Please avoid the area this morning. And on to Durban, Guazul Nadal. Uh, on the N2 northbound, there has been a multi-vehicle accident after the Guamashu interchange obstructing the left lane. Please approach with caution. And lastly, Metro Rail Northern Line. Service, de service recovery is underway following earlier overhead electrical problems between Greifontein and Aikenfontein. Delays of 40 to 60 minutes apply. Please be patient this morning. Back to 8 o'clock traffic roundup. Right now, let's have the last look at the weather with Jamie. Thank you so much, Kothla. It's a beautiful Wednesday. Happy hum day to everybody. And of course, as always, we've asked you to send in your sunrise pictures. Thank you so much to Nancy Governor for your amazing sunrise picture from Umkumas in KZN. And of course, another regular for us is Pat Sinkel for your beautiful sunrise from Durban, as well as Charlotte Martins for your sunrise from Banana Beach in KZN. And then last but definitely not least, Alan Rudnicki for your stunning skyline from Langaban in the Western Cape. But it's time now to look at the 
the rest of the country. Starting off in Polokwane with a low of 17, peaking at 28 degrees today. If you find yourself in Umbombela, high humidity can be expected, ranging from 21 to 30 degrees. Pretoria, 19, 28. And then thunderstorms can unfortunately be expected for you, Johannesburg, today, with a low of 17 and a high of 27. Mahi King, 18, 30. Clarks Dorp, 19, 28. And then heavy rainfall expected today for Kimberley, with a low of 20 and a high of 28. Bloemfontein, 16, 26. Now a couple of showers coming through for Richards Bay today, with a low of 22 and a high of 27. Peter Maritzburg, 18, 22. Occasional rain for South Africa's playground at Durban, with a low of 24 and a maximum of 26. Mtata, 17, 26. And then a northeasterly wind of 28 kilometers per hour for you is London, with a low of 20 and a high of 26. Craddock, 17, 32. And an easterly wind of 32 kilometers per hour for you, PE, Port Elizabeth, with a low of 19 and a high of 28. High humidity can be expected for George today with a low of 20 and a maximum of 28. Now the lowest temperature to start off this morning is in Sutherland today with a low of 15 and a high of 28. If you find yourself in the mother city Cape Town today, your range is 19 and 28. And then the highest temperature in the country can be found in Worcester today with a low of 18 peaking at 35 degrees. Springbok 15, 34 and taking a break of the highest temperature in the country today is Uppington with a low of 22 peaking at 33 but of course whatever the weather wherever you find yourself today on this happy hum day make sure that you make it count um, thank you so much for sticking around uh, for the final hour of the show and you're going to get your just rewards inspiration in bucket loads so she was of course mrs south africa back in 2018 which is where we really connected with her on the show she's a model she's a runner up in survivor south africa wow. as well uh, 2019 she's a pharmacist and a mountain adventurer and an insanely awesome and cool mom i would imagine to have nicole kappa can only be described as a confident go-getter constantly setting her goals to new heights literally new heights like Kilimanjaro heights um, <laughs> confidently taking on Mount Everest even though we're about to reconnect with Nicole Kapper about an epic journey that she's going to be taking but I think most importantly the philosophy that she has that she's employed in her own life to literally take on any challenge yes Oh, morning, you, morning. This is how we should start Come every on. day. <laughs> I'm just feeling so mundane and useless in my own life now. Um, so, so good to have you back. First of all, how, how's the family? How, how are you? Thank you. We're good. We're very good. Um, starting off the new year with big challenges and uh, excited for what's to come. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you are an all-rounder. You've done it all and you continue to keep pushing yourself. What's the inspiration behind, you know, challenging yourself, especially with regards to the different things that you partake in? So, Why? yeah, Why? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. No, I used to be very scared. I actually used to be very apathetic. I used to be very fearful. I lived a very quiet life as hiding behind... Uh, my kids hiding wow. behind my fears actually and it took a little bit of a, a massive tumultuous change in my life to cause that uh, growth and I'm really glad for myself that it happened but every single day I owe my kids uh, everything because my daughter came along and she was diagnosed at birth with a rare life limiting disease mm -hmm. and I remember sitting in ICU taking stock of that moment thinking okay now what and that's kind of life before and life after this no? exactly yeah. And I, yeah, I kind of wish a moment like that for everybody, but I hope it's not as extreme. It doesn't yeah. come at the cost of somebody's health. But for me, I, I realized I could fill all of her needs as the mom of a sick child, but the one thing she needed was an example. So I decided to be deliberately brave, which for me at the time was terrifying. Mm -hmm. And it meant entering something like Mrs. South Africa. And that was the start, I think, of doing brave things for a purpose. And also doing something for yourself and knowing that doing something for yourself isn't taking something away from anyone else, mm. but rather, as you say, setting that example. Um, and you were fantastic, Mr. South Africa, as well. And we, we, we loved seeing that transformation because we obviously got a front row seat <laughs> to see how your life changed. But something else that we were given a sneak peek of was your foray, one of your adventurous missions onto Mount Kilimanjaro. We're actually going to play wow. a quick little clip here. Let's take a look. Nine and a half hours to do nine kilometers. <laughs> Oh, 
man. What I love is even like completely breathless and with this mountain kick in your back, you still managed to look cool. <laughs> you still managed to kind of like project. Bye, selfies. <laughs> how, how does that make you feel going back to that My hands moment? I'm sweating. I mm. think. You know, you always want to go to the top of a mountain to achieve a summit, but, yeah. I, you know, when you get there, what do you do? You take a selfie, you turn it around 180 degrees, <laughs> go right turn back. it down. Yeah. It's ah. actually the most unfulfilling moment. Those really? moments, oh, those moments, that's the joy is in the journey. Mm. Watching the highest sunrise and battling and struggling. And I think that's a great parallel for life because it's it's the, the joy in the journey and often in the painful moments. Earning the right to have those those moments of bliss. Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's actually shocking that you said it's actually underwhelming once you've reached the top and you focus more on the journey going to the top. Because for most people, the goal is to reach the top. That's yeah. very interesting for yes. you to say. But what was your experience then? Because I know it it didn't really end so well. You, you've been hit hard by some yeah. of these adventures. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kilimanjaro was actually a fantastic success on different levels because it represented my coming back from failure. And mm. my failure was Everest Base Camp, which was a success in that I made it to Base Camp, but felt very, very ill on the way back down. And that first day on the way down, I'd lost my luggage, so I'd been hiking for three weeks in the same clothes. <laughs> wow. No That'll break you. That'll break you, okay? <laughs> yes, and yeah. that was my initiation on the mountains. Wow. And ended up having uh, full-on altitude sickness, uh, pulmonary and cerebral edema, and being airlifted from the mountains. And that really clarifies your purpose. Uh, for me, you either, when you do something brave, you either find something that you definitely don't want to do again and you hate or mm. something that you fall in love with. And for me, I fell in love. Will you do it again? Yeah, Are you going to take on Everest? So yes, I definitely plan on doing it in the future. And it was initially part of my plans for this year. But I've realized that Everest is a personal goal. Um, there are bigger fish to fry, mm. in essence, right now. Mm. I want to take people with me. Mm. And the most realistic way to do that is Kilimanjaro. And I also want to celebrate African soil. Yeah. Kilimanjaro is the highest peak in Africa, but it's also the highest freestanding peak in the world. Wow. And uh, I've been doing a lot of climbing here in South Africa. I've climbed 14 local peaks, including Mafadi, which is the highest peak in South Africa. And I actually took the winner of Survivor. Him and I went up there together as uh, Was part that of the prize? Journey. Was that <laughs> and this is the Drakensberg, this is Cathedral Peak. You know, I went up there four times in training, and we have some of the most beautiful places in the world right here in Africa. Um, I mean, there's so much I want to ask you, but how do your kids feel about you doing this, predominantly to set an I'm example so for them? How do they yeah, yeah. see you, do you think? I know you obviously can't speak with absolute certainty, but what do you think they see? Um, they're proud and they're inspired and that's the purpose and one of my biggest missions is to talk about this more mm. because moms get asked the question so often why are you away from home why are you doing a dangerous sport mm. why do you take time away from your kids um, yes part of it part of it is for myself and that's important that they know how important self-love is yeah. but you need to be an example to your kids um, yeah. and not hide behind them. And I think there's a lot of mommy shaming that still exists in South Africa for women that try to step out and do brave things. And we need to change that narrative. Mm. And, and take nothing away from how brave just being a mom is and what that entails. We understand that, but you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to do it. I come home from the mountains with a rock and uh, stories. And my son says to me, every time I leave, I say, why is mommy climbing mountains? And he says, so I believe I can go on brave adventures too. And oh, he will, and he probably he will. will do it. I love it. Vita Thaun, you could have chosen anyone to, to partner with and, and back you on these adventures. And we need support. We need sponsors Always. to be able to get yes. this stuff off the ground. What made you choose them? I'm very selective about who I work with. Mm. And as a pharmacist, obviously, I understand the science behind it. Um, but it is a brand that represents bravery. And it is a product that keeps me going, literally, because I have very high demands on my health and my body and my Clearly. life. And I think whether it's me climbing a mountain or somebody climbing uh, to their office and going, getting through a stressful career, there's a lot of parallels for me. Mm. So it's a very relatable product that everybody needs in their life. You've done so much. Um, just lastly, what is your next big adventure? This one I'm so excited for. So we're doing a lot of preparation climbing this year. In two weeks, I'll be in Kwaduma, the highest peak in Eastern Cape, taking a Ooh. bunch of people with me. But in uh, August, on Women's Day, we plan to summit Kilimanjaro with a group of all women climbers. And uh, we're doing so very... Uh, profoundly led by the woman porters of Tanzania.
So there are a group of women that have started porting and guiding and carrying. And they're essential to it. Yeah. They are as strong as the men on Kilimanjaro, carrying 20 kilogram packs on their heads. That is. And they're incredibly inspiring and we're going to learn from them. That's incredible. Well, I'll be learning from you right now. As always, so good to connect with you, but you seem to be in such a, a cool place in your life at the moment, and that, that brings us a lot of joy. And the good news for you guys at home as well, we can spread that joy. Two lucky viewers will have the chance to win a gym membership to the value of 5,000 Rand with Vitathion. Um, you can go and activate your hashtag best mode, your beast mode, if you will, um, and embrace the brave side of life. The competition post is on the Expresso Facebook page and the Expresso Twitter page. You've got to tell us why you need Vitathine to help you um, achieve the energy levels that you want. And competition closes on the 25th of March, uh, obviously this year at midnight. But you can find all the terms and conditions on expressoshow.com. Um, I want to say good luck, but I don't think you need luck. Just stay safe. <laughs> thank Nicole, you. Thank you so much, thank for, you so much for having me. Activate your beast mode with Vitathion. My name is Trevor Lagoway and I'm 34. Up until recently, I had a gym and that gave me the flexibility to follow other passions, which meant obstacle course racing. I competed around the world as an elite obstacle course racer. Entering Tropica Island Treasure Season 9, I'd seen it on TV, so I was like, oh, I've got the availability, so let me just, let's go for it. And yeah. Who knows? He puts his body on the line and he doesn't give up. If I win, I will definitely put a big portion of the money towards the very close friends of ours that have a child that has money. Muscle dystrophy. Lucas was diagnosed with LMNA CMD, uh, congenital muscular dystrophy. Internationally, there's about seven of them. Lucas means light, um, and the whole idea behind it is to give hope. We are all so grateful for him and Daniela. When you have people like that, it's like actually kind of cool. Sorry. Oh, how can you not be excited in getting the opportunity to go to an island to play for one million rand? Tropica Island of Treasure, season nine, coming soon to SABC3.
Let's That's elevate fine. the feel good. Welcome back to it. It is your feel good breakfast show, Express on Live on SABC3. Time for us to check in on what's happening in the world of entertainment. Mm. Tinsel Town, they call it. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm excited too. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a comic book geek, okay? Yeah. I've got like the hundreds of comic books, and I'm, I'm kind of love the DC universe that yeah. they've created, and I love the, the films that have been made, but yeah. this really has made me excited. Film mm. buffs immediately know what famous Hollywood actors, uh, Michael Deaton, George Clooney, Christian yeah. Bale, Ben Affleck all have in common. Any guesses? I am Batman. They've all had the opportunity to play the iconic role of DC Comics Batman, the bad boy of the comic world. But now, British actor Robert Pattinson, known most notably, of course, for his role as a sparkly vampire, Edward Cullen, in the Twilight series, he's soon going to be putting on the mask. And the director of the latest installment of the superhero saga, his name's Matt Reeves, he took to Twitter to share this camera test of Pattinson in the bat suit for the first time and it served as a first look for many of what this new Batman iteration is going to look like. Let's take a look for ourselves. Oh. Ooh. That is a moment, guys. Oh. That is a, For a camera test, moment. That was really look. Without the music, it would have been very different. Um, wow. <laughs> Uh, that's made me very excited. That's such a peak excitement. Mm. So it's going to be, you're going to have a while to wait. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. It's going to be releasing in June of 2021. The title has been confirmed as The Batman. It also stars, how's this, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman alongside Andy Serkis, who was Gollum and just about every kind of CGI'd character that's been notable, and Colin Farrell as mm. well. Oh, wow. What a cast. Hopefully this role will add a layer of uh, tough grit to Pattinson's overall, I think, cultural impact as he recently opened up about how weird it is to frequently be cast as a hunk. And he's not the uh, most hunky guy. Um, but must be tough. The, the word... Ah, you're so hunky. Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about being I called a hunk. Cool, but, um, of course, put you guys to, to tell us what you think of the whole idea of Robert Pattinson. And this is what you've had to say. Uh, this one comes from Daniel Mandy, and uh, Daniel says, From what I've seen and read, the new Batman movie will be following the year one story arc, which is awesome. Patterson yeah. is going to make a fantastic Batman. Yeah. He's dark and brooding, and I believe he's put on a lot of weight to build the muscle. 11 out of 10. It. I'm oh. excited for this iteration. Nice. I concur. No, I concur, mm. sir. I agree with everything. He was quite, yeah. you know, a little bit lean. Yeah, by Twilight. Oh, right. like Twilight looks so like sick. Like so he's... now he's just like. Yeah, but to prepare for this. Like yeah. Oh, imagine? Zoe. We know you too well, yeah. <laughs> Zoe Human. I think he adds that extra sparkle. Sparkle. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Love it. Guys, but moving from one British hunk to the other, yeah. okay, so Madame Tussauds has uh, released the statement about who is the most kissed wax figure of the males mm. in the museum. I don't I'm know. surprised. Are people even allowed to do that? Let's is that hygienic? Absolutely not. No, They're not, not the allowed. Stars, they actually have trained staff out there for 24 hours to make sure that people don't kiss it. But of course, women get away with anything, so there's some that actually wipes the lip gloss off it. But wait, what do you guys think it is? Well, I already well, did I report know, on I this in the, the stories, news a little bit. I touched I no on it, idea. so I, we, I know, uh, I do. know. But who would have guessed? I know, believe yeah. it or not. <laughs> this wax figure gets three to four kisses out of visitors every single day. Now, he's English singer and TV presenter, Ollie Murs. Now, what is, is makeup that artist? Wax? Is that him? Is that that him? is him. Oh, he's wow. Beautiful. His teeth is a bit white on though. <laughs> but anyway, listen to what his um, makeup artist said, Emma Mihan. She says, all our wax figures have their hair and makeup done regularly to keep them looking their best. But with Ollie, mm. I'm having to keep, keep, uh, clean off lip gloss every hour. So oh, they wow. keep doing that. Because oh. girls are just... 
But that makeup artist must build a relationship with these wax figures. If you've got to keep doing their hair and makeup like every <laughs> every day, Honestly. that's quite But there's uh, guys. There's also one uh, couple that's not going to get that attention. Of course, it's Meghan Markle and Prince Harry because their uh, wax figure has been removed from the, the royal, royal family issue. and from the museum. That is so dramatic. But, yeah, the general manager did say though that they will bring it back at a later stage once yeah. they know what's their future once holds. Once they've ironed out the kinks. What we the, know, yeah. obviously, what they're going to be or doing. Or just give them, them their own spot. Story, though. Give them their own spot. What's the point if they're not part of the royal family story they can have their oh, own story do you know what i mean you cut me, you cut me deep like, you cut yeah. me real deep but this is absolutely oh, incredible uh, uh, stuff there that's very fascinating what people do oh. at wet, with wax figures but listen from that to some exciting to news real life celebrities past, yeah real <laughs> life real celebrities life and real life stories just this past week samsung did the most by unveiling their brand new flagship devices the s20 which is oh, incredible oh. and the super surreal foldable listen oh. to this full double i said galaxy z flip Crazy. And on top of that, they announced Bonang and Miss Universe Zozibini Tunzi as their newest ambassadors. Talk about power. a power couple. Power. Yeah, power collaboration. Yeah, oh, so come the this queen. Friday, here's the good news. At Santon City in Johannesburg, you'll be able to finally purchase your <sighs> Galaxy Z Flip. This amazing piece of modern technology Samuel. and meet Queen Bee herself. Yes. That is awesome. As an added bonus, when you purchase a brand new Galaxy Z flip phone that comes in mirror purple or mirror black, mm, you'll gorgeous. receive a free Samsung Care Plus service plan um, that will cover one free inner screen replacement over 12 months. Oh, and it great. can be quite a costly affair. So it's oh, a yeah. Absolutely. Trust me, it's a really ask, nice resource to have. Should you be. damage your screen, do you pay for? Two screens or one? Uh, well, that covers it. That uh, sounds like it covers it for 12 matter. months. Yeah, covered both, both, <laughs> yeah, both ways. ways. But the Galaxy Z <laughs> Flip will also be available at Samsung stores in Canal Walk and Gateway in Durban from this Friday. So plus more locations from the 1st of March. So it'll be everywhere. But we it's highly cues, recommend... guys. I'm, I'm telling you now there will be queues. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we highly recommend you pop through on Friday at Santon City if you can from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 p.m. to meet Bonang. And of, of course, get a closer look at the new foldable Galaxy Z Flip Plus. The Expresso crew will be around, will be there, so come say hi, okay? Oh. Look at that team of <laughs> superstars yeah. on yeah. screen. We need, we need to Photoshop us in there somewhere. Yeah. So the get the back, yeah, just that. behind them. We need to test these phones We need to get We need to get ourselves to Santon City on Friday. So do go check that out from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock in Santon City at the Samsung store. Meet Bonang and get these power devices. Apply for your American Express Gold or Platinum card and get 20% off your food bill or a complimentary appetizer or a free bottle of wine every time you use your card at participating taste restaurants around the country. Apply now at AmericanExpress.co.za. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is Express or Live on S A B C three, and it's time once again to step into the kitchen for the culinary hotlandling. Sing, sing, sing. Oh yes, oh 
<laughs> yes, we are answering all of your burning culinary questions on our Facebook page. It's Expresso Morning Show SABC3. We've had one question about something many South Africans know all too well. A big favorite in South Africa, ladies. Malcos. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. This question came through from Sevi Devonish, and she wants to know how do you make Malcos with perfect lumps? And I've got Nicole Snelling and Anel Potrider on standby mm -hmm. to answer this question. How do you do that? Uh, Malcos for me is this wonderful, wonderful dish. If I think about it, my whole body gets warm. Mm, I think about my mom, <laughs> my family. We, we were a huge family yeah. and we were not very rich. Yeah. So we had Malcos at least once a week. So yeah. you just take like a litre or two litres of milk yeah. with flour and a bit of butter and cinnamon. It would all, oh. It is it's <laughs> liquid milk tart. It yes. really is exactly yes. that, but it is also such a love language. When you visit mm. your grandmother during the holidays or you visit your aunties who really just love to serve milk because they make it with so much love. But getting it perfect and getting it right, the right way with the perfect lumps mm. isn't easy for everyone to achieve, uh, right? Yeah, but I think if you just look at Nicole, because yeah. all it is is flour. Yeah. yeah. And butter that you just make in little frimmel kiss. Mm. So you're just combining your butter and your flour together. So what are you doing? Are you frimmeling it? What are frimmeling you? it. Frimmel frimmeling it. Frimmel it. It must look like little breadcrumbs uh -huh. at the end. Or a little bit bigger than breadcrumbs. I like it like quite lumpy. Yes. Yeah. I also like it lumpy. So that's the trick. So the more lumpy, the better. Is yeah. that what you're saying? And you get an another version of this. Mm. The, the snail sauce. That's yeah. my favorite. What's that your favorite? That's my favorite. What is that? So basically, it's like a dough that you make, like a a pasta dough yeah. and you use the little ribbons and you cook that in your milk so it's like your instead of the lumps it's full of ribbons and oh, cinnamon no. but what i also add to mine is cinnamon, cinnamon sticks oh yes ma'am infuse yes. the milk the flavor oh Nicole, like are you done there? I'm, I'm done sorry i'm playing <laughs> yeah nicole is okay. getting a bit carried away but listen <laughs> while we're making this and nicole and anel showing us how to get the perfect lump on your milk cost the keyword is dessert sms dessert to double three seven two eight we'll send you an SMS. In that SMS, you'll have a link. In that link, there's a recipe. <laughs> Not just the recipe, but also the ingredients that are yes. involved. And it's super quick and very, simple very and easy, easy to make. Treat your family to uh, some milk costs if you haven't done so in a while. But also, just do, do take mm. some notes from Anel and Nicole. Okay, so what are you so doing now? So all you do now, you cook it for about five to six minutes yeah. until the flour is cooked. Mm. How do you know when that has happened, my dear? Look at that. It's got to be super sick. Okay. Super sick. Do you see that mm. consistency? Should I check? Um, you must taste. First, put some cinnamon sugar yeah. over it. Okay. Now some you're sugar. talking about like, oh. Or oh, you if like you've got the cinnamon more. powder, right? You just sprinkle that over and then you're good to go. But remember, there's no sugar. sugar. You need sugar in there. There's no sugar in there. No, you haven't put sugar in there. Mm -mm. Okay. So All you the must... sugar goes on top. No, this oh, goes just in goes, here. This, this is the right way how I'm doing yes. it right now. Yeah, okay, just... well, this is fantastic. Should we taste then? Let's just taste. How much sugar? How, how much sugar? Like well. That's very little. That's very little. Nicole, just throw some more yeah, sugar, like really. Yeah, we need to help him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah help him. <laughs> okay, let's see. And then you do this. Nicole, there's a spoon. Thanks. Man, this tastes like home. Mm. This tastes like love. That keyword no. is dessert. SMS mm -hmm. dessert to double three seven two eight. We'll send you an SMS with a link to the recipe. This really just does take me home. Mm -hmm. So delicious. Thank Told you so much. Delicious. Oh man, Anel, mm. Nicole, oh, you guys have been cheers. absolutely fantastic. Let us know what you think mm -hmm. of the quick and easy ways to make the melkos that we've showed you today <laughs> on our Facebook page using that hashtag Expresso Show. Let's go traveling right now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yum. This is one of the high points of my week. Always, I'm joined by Tito from Imagine Cruising's uh, roving ambassador. Um, and he's going to be sharing with us some tips, some insights, and lots of first hand knowledge about yet another fascinating part of the world. A region that never loses its popularity. There's a reason why thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have this on their bucket list the wonderful Western Mediterranean coastal cities, Spain, Italy, France, and the Balearic Islands. And an exciting brand new Costa ship to boot this nine night cruise runs between March and December this year so check out your calendar find a slot in your schedule to make this trip happen 
And it's a lot easier when you have a starting price of 19,999 Rand for an inside cabin that is accessible for a trip of a lifetime. Uh, Tino, welcome back, buddy. How are you? Um, really good, man. <laughs> good um, to see you. Josie's been fantastic, so, um, but, but really nice to connect with you because <laughs> you have a, a, an emotional connection to some very of the destinations, much, in much. particular one. Uh, you kind of Mr. Barca now. <laughs> um, I know that you love a lot of these places because you've been there and you've experienced mm. them firsthand. But nothing, you know, we can see them, we see them in movies, we talk about them on our show but nothing can take away that real life experience. No, definitely. I mean, we've got Barcelona, we've got Rome, we've got Marseille. You're visiting three countries, Italy, Spain, France, all in one go. And you even get the opportunity to see six major cities amongst all of these countries. And the season is just phenomenal. It gives you the easiness of traveling from March till December. You can choose whether you want to see Europe in spring, summer, autumn or winter. And it's each, right each season you. has its pluses. Yes. Yeah. So you can you can literally custom design your holiday to when it suits you best. Um, I love that. And it is a very accessible price. And I'm going to gush a little bit over that. 19,999 <laughs> Rand is very accessible. That's a price, like the price of a plane ticket to get to Europe on most, most cases. Very true. Um, the whole experience is made that much more amazing by virtue of the fact that you're on a brand new ship. This is quite massive and I think it's one of a kind because a lot of people don't have the opportunity to say they were part of an inaugural season of a ship. And this is the Cost of Fleet's newest flagship. It's their biggest ship and it's now rated the fifth biggest cruise ship in the world. And they really endeavored to bring as much Italian cuisine on board so that once you've been on board, you can literally say you've practically taken at all parts of Italy without even being in those areas. And, and of course, the added bonus you get to do actually go to those <laughs> places in Italy um, and places in Spain. This has got one of the best itineraries I think that we have ever done um, in our amazing journey. Um, true. Um, so we, we're going to get into a few more of those choice destinations in that itinerary. Um, but I've got to reiterate that this is an incredible opportunity for you to be able to do something that most people have on their bucket list and it's so accessible. We've looked at some great European destinations. You'll be very visiting on this nine night cruise as well as that price 19,999 Rand that is a bargain we've also um, taken a look at the Costa Smeralda launched only late last year it's inaugural year which will be taking yes. you on that voyage this fantastic Mediterranean holiday which runs nice open window from March until December includes a two-night stay in Barcelona and is one that will fit into your photo albums. Perfect <laughs> timing as well. And you can book it right now. You can, in fact, call as we speak, 0861 777 We'll take a, a more in-depth look at some of those amazing destinations in a moment.
Welcome back, fam. I'm here with Tino from Imagine Cruising, and today we are looking at a nine-night Western Mediterranean cruise Barcelona stay for two nights, running from March up until December, with a starting price for an indoor cabin of 19,999 Rand. You'll also be cruising on board a brand new ship, the Costa Smeralda, which is the company's flagship and biggest in its fleet, one of the biggest in the world. Tino, this is a special one. I mean, all of your cruises are, are beautifully crafted and offer a little bit of balance of everything yeah, um, which I love but this one has some amazing six destinations talk me through the itinerary well you start off in Barcelona which as you know is your my, favorite city my favorite in the whole world, world. The whole I know, world. I know. <laughs> and you're there for two nights so you actually have enough time to really explore everything you can do culture with Antoni Gaudi's um, cathedral de la Sagrada Familia you can go to Pablo Picasso's museum you can stroll down La Ramblas and enjoy some of the Escudela which is a fantastic seafood um, stew that they make, have sangria, have paella, <laughs> and then right at the end of Ralamblas you've got the beach. So by the time you actually embark your ship, you've almost had a full holiday. You've had a holiday, and a two day holiday, yeah. And then we go off to the Balearic island of Palma de Mallorca. Now this island is fantastic. It's got cobblestone streets, narrow alleyways, and it's got a huge Arabic influence due to its location close to North Africa, so the Arab baths are a must to see. And this is also your beach destination. So even if you're there in winter time, this island is famous for having sun all year oh, round. Yeah. So get that in there. And then awesome, we go up to Civitavecchia, which is the gateway into Rome. Pretend you're a gladiator <laughs> at the Colosseum. <laughs> and then we will visit La Spezia entry into Florence and the Cinque Terre and these are those five famous fishing villages that are draped on the Ligurian coast with all those pastel colors they are exquisite and Manarola postcard Portofino quality. it's like it's literally like a postcard and then we go up to Savona on the western coast of Italy where you can visit Genoa which is a maritime icon city in um, in Italy it's also the birthplace of Christopher Columbus which a lot of people didn't know and you can actually go see the tiny little house that he was born in, in a city center <laughs> humble beginning and then oh. we end off your trip in the south coast of France on the French Riviera in the city of Marseille. Now this is beautiful. You can go into the Bohemian um, Cour Julien Quarter and eat some boulabes, again seafood. So for the seafood lovers this is definitely a must see. And then at the pinnacle of the city is the Basilica of Notre Dame de la Garde. This is the most visited um, attraction in the city and it gives you the best view 360 degree view of la provence which is just exquisite so i mean the list just goes on um, what I, I love about this is, I mean, the food is always seems to emerge as a strong focus for, for yes. you and I because there is no better way of exploring a culture than being able to experience it. And I love the fact that you've obviously got a real taste of Italy on board the, the Costa, which is, endless, is fantastic. Endless. But you can be inspired on the ship and then go and experience it firsthand um, in real life. And I love the selection of marquee cities here. I think yeah. most people, when they're going to invest in a trip like this, they want to know that they've done the full There's so many boxes trip. you can tick off. Yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely amazing. amazing stuff so we're going to delve a little bit deeper but I love this beautiful balance of culture of cuisine um, an opportunity for you to do something that I think is going to change your life so we've looked at the exciting mix of European cities you'll be visiting on this nine night cruise as well as the price uh, I re reiterate 19,999 Rand for that inside cabin which is amazing value especially um, knowing that it's a brand new ship and this fantastic Mediterranean holiday that runs from March until December includes a two-night stay in Tino's favorite city, Barcelona, <laughs> and it's one that you, I think, will ultimately leave with memories that will last a lifetime. And you can secure your spot right now. Call 0861 777 -245. We are still hanging out with our dance champions, Latara and uh, Cameron, who are gearing up for a competition that's happening at the end of the month, right? To qualify for the South African Colours. Are you guys excited for that? Yes, I'm very excited. And how often do you guys practice, like, daily or weekly? Twice a week. Twice a week. And then do your parents, like, watch what you eat? Like, do they tell you, like, how to prepare for the show? Yes. Really? But are you allowed to like get like a snack? Yeah. Just to cheat. So this is going to be your little cheat snack, but don't tell them, okay? Yeah. This is this Princess. You can order whatever you want here. And then, uh, yeah. 
Can I have a chocolate muffin, please? Chocolate Ooh. muffin. Okay, Thank Nana. You. Also, you, Cameron, you're getting a chocolate muffin. While they indulge in their chocolate muffins, let's take a quick break. And after the break, to end off the show, they are going to be performing for us. So keep it locked right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Thank you. Only the highest grade Arabica beans. Macafe. Great coffee. Simple. See you after the break. Excuse me, can I have your attention please for one more time? Stop your diet, baby. You don't have to slim down. Down, down, slim down. I love your curves, and believe me, it is every pound. Down, down, every pound. Stop your diet, come on. Do it for me. Do it for me. I love you round, 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 round. Cause you're so sexy. Yes, she is. She tastes like cola. cola. Sweet, sweet sugar cola. cola. When I took a sip from her lips, she sent me on a. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, you beautiful souls. Thank you so much for keeping it locked on your feel-good breakfast show. Today, we are exploring the coastal cities of the Western Mediterranean on the shiny, brand spanking new Costa Smeralda ship launched just a few months ago. For a starting price of 19,999 Rand, you'll get to see some of Europe's most scintillating sights from the weird and wonderful architecture of Barcelona to the treasures of Rome. This nine-night cruise is running until December, so there's plenty of time to fit it in and ample motivation. I always do kind of a reverse engineering when I work out what it would cost to stay at a hotel in Cape Town for nine nights. It would cost you more than this cruise that is going to take you to some of the flagship destinations in the world. And we're feeding you all the way through. Uh, yeah, snacks included. <laughs> I, I don't know why I always get drawn to that fact, but it's, it's not every chance that you, you have an opportunity to get on board one of the most Technology, like technologically advanced ships in the world, but this is absolute luxury. I literally pulled out all the stops, I would say. Costa did a phenomenal job, and it does give our clients bragging rights to say that they did an inaugural season on a ship. Um, their cabins, for example, they've got these virtual panels in some of the inside cabins that gives you the illusion that you're staring out over a fantastic, beautiful Italian city. All their public spaces have been based on either an Italian city or famous piazzas, so you don't feel like you're on a ship you actually feel like you're outside and that is the kind of vibe that all the new ships are going for all the cabins have been designed by famous interior designers Italian designers um, they've got an indoor swimming pool where you can use headphones to join the silent party which is definitely a first I've never heard of that on any so cruise ship cool. before and then my favorite is the floating restaurant they've got a Venetian style restaurant that floats on a lagoon so it actually feels like you having dinner in Venice and then again food they've got a, a pizzeria the Pomodoro pizzeria where they make handmade pizzas over 14 varieties of it and then you end it off with a gelato from the gelateria I mean it's 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 just endless I mean I don't even know if seven days are going to be enough for you uh, to probably explore not, the yeah, ship. And, and you do have to get off the ship I mean as much as you want to <laughs> stay on it the destinations are are, are mouth-watering in what they they offer not just from a cuisine perspective but in terms of because I always think of this as something you know, people have a lifelong dream of traveling the world and doing something magical like yes. this. And you want to know that once you've done it, you, you can come back. You have, you know, the stories to tell, the experiences of being able to actually immerse yourself. The fact that you've got two nuts um, in Barcelona, Barcelona. That's, that's a big thing because you can feel like you've really kind of sunk your teeth into it. If I had to ask you with your learned experience of this part of the world, 
choose maybe two highlights of a trip like this? What would stand out for you? Definitely Barcelona. Um, it's never the same when you go back. It always feels like a brand new experience and you've got enough time here. I can't stress that in much it, or enough. Um, it's just phenomenal. We can go from the top to the bottom, do culture, do shopping, do the food, do the beach. You can really get a feel for your holiday. And then let's not shame or put Rome in, in the in, in the, the shade. Yeah, yeah, in the, <laughs> Rome is still phenomenal. Seat, yeah. And you also have enough time in Rome. Um, the itinerary is designed so that clients can literally go to Rome for the full day and see everything that they want to see. They can start at the Colosseum, climb the stairs of the Spanish steps, throw their coins in the Trevi fountain, and then sip a cappuccino and watch the Vespas go by. It's, it's non-stop. What is it about the Mediterranean that makes it so special? The, you know, your eyes light up when you talk about it, and, and I know that you've been to, to so many of these destinations, which is really lucky, but it's part of the job. Um, you know what? For me, I am a bit biased because I lived in Italy for eight years, and the Mediterranean is just so well kept. It doesn't change with modernism almost. It feels like you're constantly stepping back in time, and that for me is what just always blows my mind. It looks exactly the way and sometimes even more prettier than what you could expect it to be, so. Um, I love that and the fact that you can, you can uh, yes, take photographs, but you can also take the time to walk off the beaten path. You can, you can meet that guy. You need to get lost in Europe and I mean, you'll be fine. Um, I love it and this gives you an opportunity to be able to do it in spades, but also unpack once or certainly once you've left Barcelona. How cool is it to be able to do this, having your home base being a ship like the Costa? My favorite part is every morning when you wake up, you're somewhere, somewhere else, somewhere different. And I mean, the season does run from March until December, so you can literally pick a date. Um, our lead date is the 20th of November 2020, so it puts you in a position to secure your holiday today with a deposit only, and then you can wow. save as time goes on to lock in this price, because to the public, we're selling it currently at 22999 and only for Expresso viewers today, it's 19999 so it's really... Just do phone it. in, let us do our job and help you and make it easy for you to go on the stream holiday. Well, I think getting the price down to 19,999 Rand, you've already done your job, but you've done it. <laughs> I hope so. Um, this is a really special one and hopefully we've inspired you as well. This nine night cruise starts at 19,999 Rand for an inside cabin. There's a virtual wall that shows a part of Italy. I mean, <laughs> um, including breakfast, lunch, dinner, all your snacks on board and um, all the Emirates flights and taxes as well well it's running from march up until december a great opportunity to see some of the western mediterranean's hotspots and be one of the first to sail on the costa smeralda while it's still brand new it also includes a two-night stay in the wonderful catalan capital of barcelona just do it man just book now call 0861 do yourself that favor you earn the right What a beautiful morning here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Definitely putting the Mediterranean on the map. But now to put Atlantis on the map again, part of Geo's dance studio here is Latara and Cameron with a cha-cha-cha. Excuse me. Can I have your attention, please, for one more time? Stop your diet, baby. You don't have to slim down. Down, down, slim down. I love your curves and believe me, it is every pound. Down, down, every pound. Stop your diet, come on. Do it for me. Do it for me. I love you round, 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 round. Cause you're so sexy. Oh, yeah, she is. She tastes like cola. cola. Sweet, sweet sugar cola. cola. When I took a sip from her lips, she sent me on a trip. She keeps me up at night and it's all because she tastes like cola. Me on a trip, she keeps me up at night, and it's all because she 
you can. Can I try it, baby? You don't have to be shy. Shy, shy, don't be shy. You seem to be on your own, and I'm wondering why. Why, why, wondering why. Show me all that you've got. Do it for me. Do it for me. I love you round, 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 round. You're so sexy. Yes, she is. She tastes like cola. cola. Sweet, sweet sugar cola. cola. When I took a sip from her lips, she sent me on a trip. She keeps me up at night, and it's all because she tastes like cola. cola. Sweet, sweet sugar cola. I'll be your sugar daddy, you'll be my sugar cane. With every sip I'm taking, you'll drip into my vein. You are as sweet as cola, you push like coffee. I wanna know the secret that no one's ever seen. She tastes like cola, sweet, sweet sugar cola. She tastes like cola. You guys are beautiful. You know what's funny? It's that when you speak to you, so soft. But when the music starts, it's not my core. Ow! Congratulations and everything of the best for you guys. And of course, let us know what you thought of that on Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Tabisa, what did you think about that? Oh, oh, they are such a joy to watch. So, so talented. And I know they're going to do well and represent as well. Well done, Cameron. Well done, uh, uh, Renata, as well. It's absolutely fantastic what you're doing, Giovanni, with the kids in Atlantis. But of course, Nicole, one viewer, Tabo Rasimeni, was not about to let you go without asking this question or squeezing it in. So I have yeah. to ask it before we close the Let's show. Uh, OK, so he says it's very common to use veggies like beetroot uh, when making cakes. Any other veggies one can incorporate into a cake? Well, people tend to forget about veggies going into cakes. You yeah. know, uh, think about your classic carrot cake. Yes. You've got carrot in there. Yeah. And a lot of um, boutiques I'm seeing are doing courgettes as well okay. inside. That's a very good one. Yeah. And your humble pumpkin and sweet potato. Oh. Like, don't forget about those. You Mash would think them those up. would be the easiest go-to because they're sweet. And that yeah. makes for nice, uh, uh, um, what were you saying earlier, cupcakes? Well, brownies. Brownies, brownies. I would brownies. do brownies, brownies with a... That's um, it. With the butternut and your pumpkin, yeah. and just remember, mash it up and then yeah. incorporate it into your flour. That is the best, best way to have it. Tabo Rasimeni, hopefully, yeah. after this bit of information, you are ready to rock that kitchen. But just to recap those keywords once again, if you want to get your hands on any of the recipes of stuff we've made this morning with my lovely Nicole, uh, this one over here, uh, the, the it was sweet. sweet. Keyword is sweet to double three seven two eight. SMS sweet to double three seven two eight. Milk boss. Oh, milk boss. Lovely milk boss. Dessert. Of course, lovely dessert, delicious. In fact, Anel left with a bowl, and we haven't seen her, and the keyword is sweet. I'd rather dessert, dessert, I'm, I'm lying, I'm lying. Dessert <laughs> to double three, seven, two, eight. And of course, we made a whole fruit pizza, and the keyword is pizza to double three, seven, two, eight. But of course, I have to invite the rest of the team to come I'm taste, nice. guys. I've been watching you salivating from every corner of the studio. Please, I want to see someone bite into a cupcake. A kushe, please, I want to see you bite into it. I you guys. I'm also face. on a diet. Nice. You have to tell me what you think of the milk cost, Graham. Okay. Ooh, and is, this, is this the lumpy or the... Which one is I've, this? I've, I've, that seemed to be a nuance. So, yeah. Banana mm. lumpy. Um, it's the lumpy Banana, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Tell us what you think. <laughs> um, thank you. We love you guys. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us for an amazing <laughs> show today. Nicole Kappa was oh, so... you eat that? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been so That's inspired throughout the show. But yes, thank you to all of our guests for joining us. Thank you so much for joining that us this morning delicious. and waking up on the right side we'll of the tomorrow. Again tomorrow morning. We good. love you. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao, meow, meow.
Expresso Morning Show, made with love by Clover. Uh, never feel good production.